This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Onnit and their flagship product, AlphaBrain. AlphaBrain is the first fully balanced nootropic designed to increase focus and mental drive. For our listeners, get up to 10% off when you use promo code Rooster at onnit.com slash gaming. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash gaming. This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is also brought to you by Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you binge on thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere, on your TV, PC, smartphone, or tablet. Support this podcast and get an extended free trial of Hulu Plus when you go to HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. Hey! podcast no thanks to jj for calling us about 10 seconds early jj yeah it's great your, your the intro to the the first part was way better than uh yeah, your recovery I'm, I'm intro so well, the people I'm people jaded. will not know how great it was yeah i'm just jaded can't recap because sometimes magic. i'm no. afraid that the monitor's not working we've had that before yeah. so when the director points to me i go <laughs> director well oh, now we the, the, the screen goes congratulations on the promotion. Oh, floor manager i should say floor manager <laughs> Uh, who's who's directing right now? Is it Chris? Chris. Chris. Because we got Brandon out here. We got actually. <laughs> so we got Ben, okay, Gus, Ben, Brandon, Bernie. Hey, how you doing, everybody? Three Welcome B's. to the podcast. Cut to Gavin, me, Chris. Thank you. Hey. Gavin so is listen. not here this week because he's in England visiting his cat. So I'm the British person this week. Really? Yes. Are you going to like this, bring us up a couple IQ points, though, hopefully? I, we'll I, see. I'm I drinking, had, so hopefully. I had to notice the difference. Are you at all worried, Brandon, that sitting here, Chris is in the seat directing? that if he does a better job than you, that we will think you're a shitty director. I've already sabotaged mm. a show. How? I'm being honest? I can't, I, can't, I can't tell. Oh, so, <laughs> you see, that hurts. Uh, oh, really? Sorry, buddy. Uh, when, right before, no, I set everything up. Everything is good to go. I spent time before, making b- sure everything works. Before we went live, uh, Brandon was sitting Chris down at his desk and getting him ready to uh, direct the show. And uh, I don't know what I was doing. I was tracing a cable or something. And then Chris, I just hear Chris start screaming, going, oh my God, there's a fucking toenail on the desk. Fingernail. It was a fingernail. Why so did you say toenail then? Jesus. Oh, I don't know, because he overreacted. He does that. It's a fingernail. Who was it in the old office? There was someone who used to cut it's their fingernails desk. into a desk drawer. Jeff. Was it Jeff or yeah. Matt? It was Jeff. So gross. It was at the Buda office, right? At the apartment? And it was a little thin drawer about that big, and you'd open it up, and there were all these tiny little <laughs> fingernail trimmings in there. It was so fucking disgusting. And apparently it was seen as totally normal. No big deal. That you would leave like discarded parts of your own human body. It was. See, I wasn't collecting them. It was no shit. It was years of fingernails. It's it's gross. So I I do something that my wife says is kind of gross. I want to get y'all's your feedback on it. It is. It's gross. So sometimes I get like loose skin on my foot. Yeah, it's gross. Uh, And I like peel it off. uh, And my dog likes to eat it, so I just. No, 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 no. no. Why is it gross? You feed it to your dog. Yeah. He knew what was happening. He likes it. He likes. He doesn't understand. He likes to lick my feet. He likes. How he do you likes, know he likes to lick he, your feet? I have to wear socks all the time, because if I don't, he will go to town licking my fucking feet. <laughs> Maybe he thinks that's, <laughs> that's just like his payment for having to get live in your apartment. Maybe he thinks that's just like... <laughs> Isn't he going to get all your shingles, whatever it is? No, that's fine. Nah, dogs like can't get eating shingles. eating your DNA? Dogs don't get it. Jeez. Nah. What do you worry about if you get this DNA? <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I want to eat Gus. The dog has like a lab. He's like cloning me. <laughs> <laughs> half Gus, half dog gets made. So here's why it's disgusting. You pull the loose skin off of your feet. Uh. Right? Is that gross? That's not Would gross. Would you eat it? Why do you have loose skin on your feet? Because it's gross. Because it's gross. That's it. That's the exact rationale. But it's a dog. A dog will eat shit. Do you yeah, let no. your dog eat shit? Absolutely not. Do you feed okay, the dog your own shit? No. See? That's gross. <laughs> yeah. I gotta draw the line somewhere. That's What's the ridiculous. line? The feet is fine. Why? Like, what about that makes sense? I'm also kind of worried about you. Why do you, why do you have <laughs> loose skin on your feet? Yeah, that's the other thing. You ever get like dry feet and then you got like a little piece of skin just like click? Right off? No. no. Do you I have think that, that have might be a medical condition. I don't oh. remember what it's called, but it's not normal. I don't know. It's that. normal you see it? for you I, to yeah. sit around your house <laughs> and have parts of your feet fall off. Yeah. I don't think I had that. Like, I've got a blister that made, like, yeah. some loose skin. Hmm. Yeah, and like, occasionally. That you so should. maybe I've got a medical problem. But that's like an event. How regular is this? Like, are we talking every week? Every no, day? Like once a month, maybe? I mean, that's still... What are you going to do if, if Benjamin gets sick and you go to the vet? And the vet's just kind of like, it's kind of weird. There's there's human skin in his stomach. Do, <laughs> it's do you know digested. anything about that? No, would you would you admit it? Would you say, yeah. yes, I let my dog eat my feet skin? Yeah. I give him the privilege. Would they arrest you? Isn't that animal cruelty? No. To feed yourself to them? <laughs> the, the dog is lucky. He's not oh, eating some Jesus. cheap, shitty dog food. He's eating 100% Gus. God. It's grade A quality. So while we're on the subject of something that's obviously disgusting, I hit a weird, like, line, etiquette line that I'm not sure I go one way or the other, and they both seem equally as disgusting. We were in Australia, 
last week and we were doing a signing at PAX Australia. And I, I'm a gum chewer. I chew gum a lot. Like I can go through like a whole pack of gum or Altoids in a day. And I ran a situation where I got it from the desk because we were taking photos and there's this thing you do with gum where like you stick it in the corner of your mouth. But then I always feel like it's creeping its way into the photo room and have like a yeah. white piece of gum hanging out. So I got up from the table and I walked over and I went to go throw away my gum. Now really quickly, quick survey, how do you throw away gum in a trash can? Do you spit it in the trash can or do you pick the gum out of your mouth and throw it in the trash can? What do you do? Spit. I would like flick it in. Like you, you, you physically take it out of your mouth with your hand and then put it in the yeah. trash. What do it's you do? It's 50-50. But what is the right, what's the proper At etiquette for event, getting rid of gum? You definitely spit. Because you're touching so many people, shaking so many hands, you don't want to stick your fucking hands in your mouth. That's exactly what I did there. I did spit the gum into the trash can, and then I'm in front of a huge line of people that were waiting to sign with us, and I'm thinking, that's way grosser what I just did than picking it out, but I couldn't yeah. pick it out because my hands were all handshaking. You know what? Oh, boo-hoo. Now you're not sick. I know. Right. No, what I'm saying, though, is what is the... But I don't know what the line is. What is the proper etiquette? Spit. Do you spit out gum or do you pick it out? Spit. I feel like you don't want to introduce more saliva to an event like that. Like, like, pure, right? Like it's just more bodily fluids going around, and that's not what you want in life. But I recognize what, what he's I saying. Want. It's grosser for you to put your hands in your own mouth, but it seems like grosser mm. on an outward yeah. level. Like any to saliva spit. is spitting into the trash can, which is dirty. It's not a nice sight to see, though. If, if Benny's spinning, it's but. not a nice sight to see anyway. Well, ben, I'm sure it ruined the experience for everybody there. They were like, "Oh." Well, since Ben is an expert, obviously, on etiquette. Yes. Let's say we're at an event and Gus's feet fall off. Oh. Right. <laughs> does he feed them to his dog, or does he throw them away delicately no, no, the in the trash can? The better question is, do I save them to take them home to my dog, or can I just find a random dog at the event? Would you put it in a plastic bag? The correct answer is you feed it to the random dog. In a situation where Gus has leprosy and there's a crowd <laughs> of people around. Does he feed it to the dog, or does he offer it to like feed the other people? That I mean, are you should go to a hospital, really. Fucking <laughs> 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 feet are sloughing off. Would a Benjamin get upset if another dog was eating your feet? No, he's a dog. He doesn't fucking know. You let's, know. Be, let's, be, mm. let's be serious here. Do they? They don't know. Anything All right, I'm gonna look up here. Etiquette. Etiquette for spitting. Chimney. Etiquette for gum. <laughs> Throwing away gum. So Bernie just got. Bernie and I just got back from uh, Pax Australia, and I was I was talking about this before the podcast started. How I have not been on a live podcast Monday night since July 1st. It's been four weeks. That's nuts. How really? You about yeah, y'all did the one Fuck, on the 15th. Fuck, I missed you, dude, when, when you were gone and I was sitting here trying to wrangle these Yeah, people. there was a lot of chaos in the one time that you went here. That'll happen. I missed you. You weren't trying to wrangle. What's the opposite of wrangle? You were, like, promoting chaos. No, I wasn't. That's, Joel was over there reading the, the spots and all that stuff. It was horrific. <laughs> it was like, who was it, Gavin and Barbara and Joel? That's yeah. a fucking nightmare. It was everyone, wasn't it? It was, it was a fucking, fu- fucking, fucking merry-go-round over there on the green screen. Well, I like that. I like putting more people on the, the hot seat over there. I feel like everyone somebody- has a thing they like about the podcast. Like, you like putting people on the green screen. I do. During the patch, Brandon loves playing video game footage, or even when we do here, and he likes overlaying video, and I have to yell at you to, to cut back to us. Like, everyone has something they latch on to. Me, I'm just latch on to me my face. Yeah, I get mad at you because you guys keep talking about the video. And I'm like, I'll take it down, just stop talking. Well, we have to keep talking about it because you leave it on there. No, you, you stop and then I'll stop. Because then if I cut out... This is the first time about. I've ever heard See, this. this. I is, bitched no, 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 about no, no. it This constantly. is the communication in between with, uh, with Gus's earpiece. I don't hear shit. You don't tell me anything. Why do you wear you? the fucking earpiece then? I, I, hear, I hear other people saying stuff. I've never heard him say that is what I should say. Who talks in that earpiece? I thought it was you. Normally Brandon. He's never told me stop talking about the video and I'll cut away. But oh, why I do have. you guys need why do you guys have communication through the fucking earpiece? Why don't you just communicate? We do. So why are you talking now when we're on set and you're talking to him about it during the production? Because it's, it's sharing. drama and it's funny. But I know, but you could talk. I'm saying you could talk about I it. I do. I yell at him all the time. You know what? He listen, next do. time you're on set, I want you to have a mic that only goes into Gus's ear and that's it. Even when you're right here, I want you to be able to talk <laughs> into Gus's ear. You know when you said that you hired Patrick and it was make it a more professional podcast? Right. This is now like becoming the most amateur podcast, discussing feedback, everything Are you not wearing podcast. your earpiece? This is a professional discussion, oh. Ben. How dare you? I've got my earpiece. And so Chris is talking to you or Patrick's talking? Today, Chris is talking into it. Uh, how's that working out for you? How's that working out, Chris? I don't know. He hasn't said anything. I don't even know if it's working. <laughs> Thanks 20 minutes ago. He said, uh, he said it's uh, good. We're, uh, <laughs> we're, uh, it's uh, live, we're gonna, at least. Uh, we're going to cut... Uh, White Russian. Camera one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were out at PAX Australia, and we had a, a group of people go out to San Diego Comic-Con last week. Uh, I think, who was there? Kathleen and Kara. And, and Chris and Miles. Chris and Miles. Yeah. PAX Australia is literally the same days as Comic-Con, plus the fact that they're a day ahead. Yeah. That's is always that confusing shit. Is that a good shit. thing? I wouldn't, like, that seems... I don't know if they're going to do that again next year. They said, from what I heard, they couldn't get another date with the city of Melbourne, but mm. I don't know. It just seems very much like Robert Coup to go, fuck it, we're going to put our <laughs> con on the same day as your con. Yeah. 
people the, the, the people who are going, who are attending PAX Australia are probably not attending San Diego Comic Con. Mm -hmm. The only potential okay. problem I could see is with uh, exhibitors and getting people to show up. Mm. Well, how many exhibitors do they expect to come from the U.S., like game exhibitors? Well, it's different marketing budgets, you know. A lot of the people that were there were like, like Asia Pacific area yeah. marketing. Like, I talked about it, but World of Tanks was there. And instead of having like the worldoftanks.com domain on everything, it was worldoftanks.asia oh, okay. on everything. Dot Asia. Yeah, you didn't notice that? Like on all of their branding out on their stage and no. stuff? No. That was like... Because it doesn't seem like a real domain to us. Yeah. Dot Asia. Yeah. I didn't think that was a real thing. Yeah, of course dot. it is. Yeah, it's a dot everything. Well, no, there's did, not a dot everything. That's a dot Amazon, see? Did they ever make the thing where you could make the dot anything? Remember that was Eventually, like... Eventually, yeah. It's still, still going. That's still going to be a thing? Like, dot Amazon was in application, but then they were like... Because it's an actual place, they're like they've rejected it. But that's going to be... You can get anything, yeah. That's going to be the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I agree. Once you start getting like phishing emails that look like a sentence, dot, a word, <laughs> like word, dot, word. And you're like, what is you that? Should, you Where's should that get Gus, dot, Gus. No. Like we on your website. No, I'm not buying. No, you just started uh, the trend. Now someone's going to do it. Of course, they're probably already trying to do it. <laughs> well, see, like, Patient here's the zero. thing. It's like, if I ever want to check if a domain is registered, hmm. I go to, you know, www.domainname.com and see if it's there. So how would I check to see if something, if, if, if like, a, 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 is. like an extension is, is. You check out, like, a registrar website. That's too much trouble. I don't want to do that. How is that oh. any more trouble than going to another website? You just type in the name of the website. Yeah, but that's, that's not why. always correct. But Sometimes like websites don't exist or don't load, but the domain's taken. Yeah, but then at least I got an idea that it's not... An incorrect idea. It's not being used. Or it's a oh, totally God. correct idea, because I went to the website, and there's nothing there. So either the person isn't using it, and it can be bought, or it's not even registered at all, it's which is even seconds. rarer these days. It's like 10 extra seconds to go to a different website and paste the URL. Brandon, I'm on the internet. 10 extra seconds. <laughs> He's a busy man. By that point, I've what I'm second. looking for at that point. 10 fucking seconds. Did they ever register the uh, .xxx extension for pornography? I think sites? that got rejected as well. Did that it? That should not be rejected. I they don't understand like, the argument they about that. I think they kind of said that we don't want to encourage porn, and now like in England, porn filtering is going to be on by default for the entire country. Talk about that. What the hell is that? Yeah, that's weird, the, isn't the, it? The entire country. That, we're also going to have all of our like uh, American TV like secret things blocked as well. Uh, it's basically everything's going to be blocked. And apparently, social networking sites will be blocked by default. What? what they say what that in using? the thing, and it's like, they're not yeah. going to do so that. So seriously, what is left? Yeah. Basically, like the Prime Minister's homepage. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, can go to the BBC get. website, you can watch a but, great documentary about the Beatles. here's the thing, we've got to protect the children. <laughs> Wasn't the that children so MySpace and Facebook, that social networking beat out porn for the most widely used, I guess Wikipedia too, thing that people do on the internet? Is that what? true? Isn't it? I don't know. I don't remember. If, if, if so, that's, a, that's right. a sad state of affairs for humankind. <laughs> If we have all this technology invested in porn delivery mechanism and we're doing, doing it for Facebook. You know what I find weird though? <laughs> I find <laughs> weird that no one, I you were say. no one's finding this strange that just whole websites being censored entirely for a whole country. And no one's like, oh, this no, is, that's fucked no up. one's freaking out about this. You really. know, no, Ben, nobody finds anything strange anymore. I mean, we had this thing where it was revealed that the government is spying <laughs> on its citizens every fucking day. Oh no, that's not Every strange. conversation that came up and what's our reaction is like, why did that guy tell us that? <laughs> <laughs> Throw him in jail. <laughs> Throw him in jail. Get this guy out of here. It's like, and then nobody cares after like a day yeah. or anything like that. Every, and it's like, even like, um, you know, there's this big birth control bill in Texas. There's always these uh, censorship bills in the U.S. for the internet, like uh, um, CISPA and things like that. Am I getting the name Sopa, right? SOPA, PIPA, so, Yeah, CISPA, that kind yeah. of stuff. And it like goes away and then they kind of like put it in a bill with a bridge attached to it. And then that's it. You know what I mean? Then it goes through two weeks later when everybody's forgotten about it. Hmm. That's just the way it works now. Interesting. And, well, and look, I don't know how the hell they're going to censor porn for an entire country. I don't know why they want to do it. According to this article, it says uh, British Prime Minister David Cameron. Did you know it was David Cameron was your Prime Minister? Uh, now I know that. <laughs> in a speech on July 22 at a children's charity in London. Well, there you go right there, guys. Children's charity. Called for serious measures. Why are you talking about porn at a children's <laughs> charity? <laughs> he called for serious me measures aimed at protecting children from pornographic content on the internet and at cracking down on so called extreme pornography. That's two different See, issues. All those kids now are like, wait, there's pornography on the internet? But, Thank you, pal. Listen, I, got, I have two kids. Uh, I love them to death. I don't understand why we make everything about kids. Why is every single thing about who how cares about kids? Well, like I'm your not life? saying that. I'm not saying who cares about like, kids. I turned out all right. I mean, parents. And I was right? watching you. Like, yeah, well, like the parents, parents' jobs are. It's an easy battle cry. Think of the children. Yeah. It's an easy thing to rally like and hide behind. Well, it's like yeah. raise your own children. Like, why should what I am have access to in my quality of life 
be affected by your stupid kids. Well, like if someone gets up and they say, no hey, offense. you know, no, <laughs> they're not offending <laughs> me. If someone gets up there and they say like, hey, we have to have these measures to block porn because children are watching porn uh, all the time and we have to block it and censor them. I would like raise my hand and go, my kids aren't watching porn. Why are your kids watching so much porn yeah. on, the, on the net? What are you doing that you're like letting your kids watch porn 24 hours a day? Yeah, why is, why is it easier for the country to censor porn than it is for the parent to just watch their fucking kids online? I, I don't know. The TV's the worst. Like when South Park came on, it's like, you can't do this. Kids are going to watch it and they're going to emulate it. So don't, don't let your kids watch it watch the show like how hard is it and that's to me the dumbest fucking thing about blocking something like the dot xxx extension sure for that pornography would help them yeah because then if, you, then, then if every all porn sites were under dot xxx then you could block it in your house you and could make a decision a piece in of your software house. that was like block any but then dot xxx just domain. shut it off and i think the concern is like like why would porn companies go to xxx if they're gonna get like, well then you say they have to Right? To, for adult stuff. Mm. Like adults. Like, yeah, I mean, you say, uh, but as it is, they have to cover their covers. Magazines have to cover, you know, black out their yeah, covers yeah, the front. when they're on sale in a public place. I mean, what did he say? For this. What, what was he say? No, yeah. Huh? Mm. What was it he said? What? <laughs> you, you said, you, you say, eh. Oh, because you, because you were, <laughs> that was the most, was just it was the most unflattering impression. Because that's ever. what he did. It's like he's just trying to show it off. That is what I did, to be fair. I did do that. Yeah, but don't, it's don't like, beat up on him. it's the same thing as anything else. It's like, we have regulations, we have ratings, and I'm okay with ratings on stuff, yeah. Um, as long as you know people have the individual choice of whether or not they want to do it. Like once you're an adult, you should be able to do pretty much whatever you want to. Now, Heroin. when they talk about some extreme Heroin. pornography, I'm sure there's some examples of that that maybe should be censored. You know what I mean? Where mm. what he, I like, yeah, go ahead. What I like about dot .xxx is the idea <laughs> that you could just maybe put a random noun or a verb, and then put dot .xxx after, and then like find something. It's just like, it's just an infinite number of possibilities. You don't have to like search for anything. So, so you're saying there's an infinite possibility of porn. Open a dictionary, and put in now. a word, and I'm sure there's a website for it. Yeah, well, you know, there's actually okay. like, there's actually, I, one time I worked with a company that they were making filtering software um, for parents to use in their house for kids. And they showed how like, there's, there's words that you can type in that you can search for that a kid would search for that do lead to pornography. The best example of that was toys. If you look up toys on the internet, you got a 50-50 shot of what you're going to get. You know what I mean? You could get a pornography oh. site, or you could get toys for kids. And that's a, that's a word you could see kids looking up. Yeah. But if you filter that content in like Google, you said restrict on this computer, restrict all search results from .xxx domains, that's a huge tool for yeah. parents to use. Yeah, so absolutely. why wouldn't they want that? I, I totally agree. Who knows? I think when you Google the TV station you and I used to work at, I think it's a transvestite website that comes up too, oh, right? Oh, tons of them. <laughs> TSTV, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, I, don't I, know why. I would have to look up the logo for the link dump. I'd have to scroll through pages of transsexual transvestite porn to find uh, the TSTV logo. Mm-hmm. Hmm. How's that? If again, if you could filter .xxx, I would find that logo much faster. I, I, it's not. <laughs> but I mean, okay, now look. Actually, though, you're getting into a gray area there, because would you filter out uh, a transsexual website as pornographic just because it's a transsexual thing? What, what, I, what I'm saying in that case is, I would do it to help me do my job faster. If I could do my search and exclude that domain, easy. Well, what does Google Safe Search do? Is that only for images? No, that's for everything. Yeah, that's for everything. No, right. so I mean, that that operate well. as well. But what I'm saying here with you, .com, you're in the yeah. slippery slope here of censorship. Is that if they made a .xxx site, obviously er someone having hardcore penetrative sex, uh, that would go on the .xxx site. That's how you do it, right? But if someone, if someone had a just a transsexual lifestyle homepage, oh. there are people who would say that has to go in yeah. pornography. But it doesn't because no, it's not pornographic. Those pages did not show up in my search results, by the way. You got the straight up yeah, pornographic I got the straight stuff. up porn. Clearly everywhere. pornographic. Yeah. But it does become a slippery slope. Like there were some people of like you had dot xxx. I'm sure there are some people in the country who would say this is a like homosexual dating site that has to go in the dot xxx because I want to block it from my kids, and that, that they would force that kind of stuff to go in there. That's then why. How will kids? How will kids date? What's that? How will kids date? Uh, exactly. How would they? How would they find other people? But see, what I'm saying there is that that's the problem. When you start censoring stuff, the lines yeah. of what should be censored and what shouldn't be censored, or what is or is not d well, explicitly sexual content, you, is not the same you, to everybody. You end up with a committee that has to decide and draw yeah. the rules up. That's that's and always then, existed. Though. And they're gonna fight like fucking right. maniacs. And then it's like, oh, this should be included. This shouldn't be included. And you end up with. Chaos. But like, it's either, and the bottom line is, watch your kids. You yeah, know, and absolutely. It's, you know. it's a really famous. I don't know if it was a Supreme Court justice or a congressman. The only definition they had for pornography was, you know, when you see it. Like that slippery slope has been around forever, just in different mediums. Whether it was magazines or you know old film or uh, 
Uh, yeah, but uh, but that's not a, that's dates. not everybody sees the same thing when they see it. If I go to, for instance, a gay dating site and I see two dudes kissing on okay. the front page, I'm like, good on you. That's me. awesome. That's fantastic. There are people who would see that and say that they, I, my children can't be exposed to that, you know, or something like that. I that use, seems I use less my pornographic. Assholes. That's less pornographic. What's that? They're though. assholes. They're what? They're assholes. They're assholes. That's right. not a pornographic thing. That's like a more of what they would call an ethical thing. That, but that gonna, like there's people that are going to make the <laughs> argument that that should fall in the dot. They're going to say, I know it when I see it. I see that. That should fall under the censorship line. Right. Because yeah. they're going to claim it's uh, an immoral lifestyle. Once you yeah, start but I think that, that, that process. Those are two different dialogues. Immoral lifestyles. But don't that's they, what they the get rhetoric. bundled in together all the time? What, what I'm saying, saying is that you see time. it that way. Can't you see that other people don't see it that way? No, I think peop those people have no problems just saying, no, we have a problem with that. It's unethical. They don't bring pornography into it. They just say that's wrong. I totally They don't disagree. have to use those tools in order to make their point. They just say, yeah, I don't like that. I think there's a lot of people in the world who use the term pornography to mean sexually offensive to me. I think mm. that's what they use it for. Like, they don't like that. And so they lump stuff that has no right being listed as porno pornographic as being pornographic. It just means morally offensive is what it means. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. So, uh, so that was political. <laughs> remember when people were saying political. like, oh, I hope the podcast gets more I political. Got yelled that was the most political. political I think I've ever He's heard not it. not political at all. No. No, what, about government censorship? That's political. Yeah, we were talking about... Uh, and then like ethics and, I don't know. Uh, Morality. Thanks for joining us. Morality. <laughs> <laughs> Not fucking politics. Exactly. Well, that's our point counter David, point discussion. That's David Cameron. So what do you think about the legislature's newest initiative in right. order to right. blah, blah, blah? So, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I even, like it. Blah, 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 blah. You can't even come up with an example. You know <laughs> so little about I politics. even. <laughs> I have no idea. What's a big thing right now that you think that you know in the political sphere? What's one of the biggest things you know about? Oof. Um, uh, healthcare? Really? What about it? What about it? That exists. Um, <laughs> I mean, do we want to get political? <laughs> <laughs> Gus, tell me more about healthcare. I read a. Uh, no, I don't want. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want <laughs> to get into. You don't know. It. You don't know anything. Okay, you don't know anything. I read an article about uh, the GOP having a plan to block any uh, further um, government funding in order to try to get uh, Obamacare defunded this fall. What is the GOP? Was that, was that like a year? See, ago? I don't know what that is either. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. <laughs> no, oh, you do know what it is. No, it's of course I do. Let us have to raise the debt ceiling again. It's the Republican Party. It stands for so grand old party. There you go. There you go. Pull some politics. politics. I, I don't know what it stood for. I like that. You don't know that? Grand old. No. Hmm. Hmm. See, that, that is the thing. That that just goes to show. You want, take away like the lifestyle, sexual content out of it. Anytime you have a thing where you determine what is needed or what is not needed, there's always going to be people that are on one side of the line and the other side of the line, and they don't even see the line as being in the same place. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's a constant battle to find that equilibrium. I mean, right now in Texas, we're dealing with a massive nationwide, like, focus on birth control, which were issues we thought we had kind of resolved 30 years ago. Three decades ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a long time. Yeah. Been more than 30 years. Yeah. Four, what, what was Roe versus Wade? Wade? It was, it was like in the almost, 60s. I think it was 40. Yeah. Yeah, 40 now. Jesus. Yeah. I've lost track of what you're talking about. Mm. Oh, shit. One ben, direction. It's okay. <laughs> Are you back with us? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> Are you good now? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know, I was so excited. I lost my mic. I'm so disappointed that Joel is not here today. He was here. Yeah, he was You scared him off, didn't I he? Didn't, I did not scare him off. He said, Do we have five people? I said, Yeah. He goes, I'm out of here. No, that is scaring off. That is giving him permission to leave the room. You didn't fight for him either. You didn't call after him. You I was walking away Joel. slowly. I'm, slowly I was in that direction. I'm and you didn't say a single word. I'm not going to try to drag someone back to the couch who's trying to walk away What from would it. that look like, Gus? I can't even imagine what <laughs> Gus fighting for someone would be. No, oh, please. Stop. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> I just do have a him. question for you that I've been meaning to ask you. And you've been away forever. So I, I told you. I haven't been here for four weeks. Great. So, RTX. 2013, big thing. I was running around doing social media for it. I was taking Instagrams of things. Don't use Instagram. And then, and then later that night, <laughs> I, look I look at the Twitter feed. I look at the Twitter feed RTX, and I'm Instagramming, and then there's a tweet from Gus <laughs> saying, Dear RTX event, please stop using Instagram. Love Gus. And then there's more Instagrams for me. <laughs> Why do you not like Instagram so much? Because it doesn't load in app. Yes. yes, it does. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. What do you mean it doesn't load in app? So you say yes, it does, and you don't even know what the fuck I mean? Tweetbot, it loads right no, in the app. In Twitter. Oh, because um, I use Tweetbot. It doesn't load in the I'm gonna, app. I'm, I'm going to click it. It doesn't. Of course, you're going to click it because it's a thing. But no. You know, you get, no. No. Do you know what loading an app means? You're a fucking developer. <laughs> loading an app means you don't have to fucking click it. It just loads. Look, what else am I supposed to do? Give me a different solution, Gus. The, you the could have presented an alternative com. solution. The built but then there's in no videos. I was doing videos as well on Instagram. Don't do videos. Oh, okay. I have Instagram now for one reason. I found the perfect. Perfect use for Instagram. Yes. I think I've added two pictures in the year and a half I've had my account. 
I now just take Instagrams to send them to Gus. <laughs> That's the whole purpose that I use it for now. I, I fucking hate Instagram. Gus the other day couldn't get on Civilization. He was bitching about it on Twitter. Mm. So I just took an Instagram of me playing Civilization. That. That's all I do, and I send it to him. So apparently, <laughs> Civilization so 5 just doesn't work on Mountain Lion. Well, it's Mac. Why are you fucking gaming on a Mac? Because like, I bought it on Steam, and it's got the little fucking like Mac logo showing that it works. <laughs> I used to play it Final Lion all the time. And I was like, I upgraded to Mountain Lion a few weeks ago. I was like, I'm going to play Civ 5. Nope. Why did you install Mountain Lion? You held out this long. Because you didn't uh, like it. You thought it was... To test it in order for Mavericks. Uh, like, groundwork uh, going forward for Mavericks. What does that mean? The next OS, 10.9. Oh. And you completely lost it on what the fuck you were talking about. They I made a joke. I, here's what I thought in my head. I thought... We had an event coming up called Mavericks in which we were going to have to play Civ Five as part of the event on Max. Sounds great. Let's do it. Let's do it. I thought Sea Lion was a way better name for it. Is Mavericks uh, supposed to be like a play on Max? No, it's like a place in California, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everything is going to be California themed for the next 10 Instead or 12 of cats. years. Because yeah. there's, not, there's not many cats. They, uh, they, they, the reason we want to... We finally, at Rooster Teeth, are probably going to upgrade to Mavericks because they fixed a long-standing network file share bug that nice. we've been having to deal with for years. Yeah, we're still in Snow Leopard. We're like three years behind. Yeah, so we'll finally... Uh, Why would you purposely stay fixed. three years behind, though? Surely that's like... There's no compelling just, features. Just making you aware. No, no problem. Features. Let me tell yeah, you. No problems. They put out Final Cut X. I don't know anybody was, in the company that uses Final Cut X. I was the only person that liked it immediately. And do you still use it? Yeah. I used it a few weeks ago. And listen, a few weeks ago, with, Bernie. With all due respect, Let's you're see. also one of the people who edits the least amount of video in the yes, company. Yes, that is also true, but yeah. that's not relevant. Yes, I know, <laughs> but you do edit video. You have a lot of side projects yourself yeah. that you do for short films and all that, which have been very great. I loved your uh, the one that used the song from uh, what's it, the Wild Things. What's the song? That, oh, was, yeah. years, that was years ago. Arcade Fire. That was a long time back ago. Back when we were in that, see, Arcade we get, Fire. Where came Flame? Yeah, it was Arcade I can't Fire. believe I know an Arcade Fire song. I, I always see those hey. guys like on. Saturday now Night Live you can and say stuff, you, and I never knew they were. Now you can say you're all indie. Yeah, Ben, yeah, I mean, there we go. God, your street cred's off the through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> One Direction. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I'm, crazy, I'm all indie. Crazy. Let me talk about indie stuff. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's my default. Fucking talk about, you gonna talk about something I don't know. Uh, no, not yet. I'm just okay. I'm looking at Twitter. Okay, Jesus good. Christ, do you want to fucking do the reads? <laughs> God damn, can I fucking look at Twitter? No, but I'm so happy. Like, even Instagram, my joke of like putting an Instagram up to basically just annoy the shit out of Gus. Mm. I now feel like I have to keep that going, and I really don't want to. That's the whole thing about Here's social media now. I'm done. I'm Why? done. Just Here's stop. how I feel about you guys with social media, because you're so old. You're like Go the ahead. old people in our folks' home. They're like, oh, new technology. And you're like, I just want to read my newspaper and do my crossword in the morning, and that's it. And you just so, you hate every new that thing. That sounds wonderful, You need guys. to be more- Get the fuck off of our live streaming <laughs> podcast, <laughs> you... which is about the newest fucking thing you can do right now. You... That's how I feel about Tumblr. I had to get people to explain yeah, to me what Tumblr, Tumblr is. Yeah, you have a Tumblr account, Ben? Like, yeah, how to work I it. I don't tumble, but I, I read Tumblr's Tumble. over, right? Is it? I don't, I don't know what that means. No. But I'm just it's saying over. you should be more fickle. I should be more fickle? Yeah. It's fun that way. Life's more fun that way. What does fickle mean? I can't believe, I'm tr I can't believe a fucking teenager's trying to give me life advice. I'm not a teenager. <laughs> You need to call me old, I'm going to call you a fucking teenager. Ben, okay. don't you feel like you have enough stuff to do in your life to where you have a Facebook, right? you have a Twitter account, Instagram, Vine now. Yep. You just made a Vine five minutes I ago. I did so do that. Don't you have enough to do? And don't, don't, after a while, don't you feel like keeping up with all of that stuff prevents you from making other content? What, you're just what like content these, do I want to make? You're just though. feeding all these machines. So, well, you tell me you're using Final Cut X all the goddamn time, apparently. <laughs> you're using Instagram video could, over Vine? Vine loads an app? I'm fine with Vine. Even though it's stupid and there's no reason to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm really afraid, too. It looks like Vine is going to catch on. And there was a while there where it was like, it was, it was, it was it looked like nobody was going to do yeah. it. Nobody was going to do it. And yeah. then, like, one or two people made halfway decent vines, and then all of a sudden. I think they should, they should cut Will Sasso a big fat check. Yeah. They should. That's all you talk about, isn't it, Will Sasso? What's that? Like, that's the, only, like, the only person you follow on Vine is Will Sasso, essentially. I don't think I follow him. You can follow people on Vine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that? until Gavin did it that you can re-Vine people. Re-Vine. That's a thing. Re-Vine. Now that's a word that people know, and it's in my fucking you, you head be, now. You should, you should vineyard them. I mean, not, <laughs> <laughs> I want to make a vineyard of my favorite Vines. I'm going to re-Vine it. Before they use it. What does that do when you re-Vine? It's like retweeting. It's retweeting. Yeah. Okay, retweeting's a thing. So it's the same concept. It sends it to your followers instead. On what? Vine. On Vine. In the app. Who the, in the fuck Vine app. is on Vine browsing? I've got followers on Vine, apparently. I don't know. 
What do you do on? You go to the vine. You look app. at the vines. What do you do on vines? It's just like Twitter. You read. You, six, it's six, just like lines. everything else. You flick through it, and they automatically play. So it's just like you know, you're flicking through life and shit. I don't it's know. literally like everything else out there. I'm going to my vine everything. app right now. Great. I made like I'm ten so or eleven, and I, every single time I'm like, this is shit. This is just like this is like the shittiest video. Yeah, there's, I tried. There's it's like I guess there's charm in making something shitty, but it's like I can't do it. There's no reason. <laughs> it's just to me, it's more noise. It's like yeah, I don't, have we ever talked about in the podcast some of the horrible stats that are associated with YouTube? The scariest one to me is that every single minute on YouTube, a hundred hours of footage are uploaded. Yeah. So if you want to watch every single video on YouTube, you fall four days behind every minute, every minute you try to do that. That's frightening. That's as frightening as an, an enormous amount of content. Nobody's watching it. Nobody's watching this stuff. Here's the thing though, do people use YouTube for like personal things? Like if I want to do a personal video, I would sooner Facebook it than put it on YouTube. Like I don't think people use YouTube as just like, you know, friend to friend stuff. Right. I think it's like when people want to make their own like shows, like their own Let's Plays and stuff. But yeah, even then, like they get like 50 a platform views. like that. And I think that's like, you're right, that's the niche. Like, that, like originally it was, it's got you in the name. But now, like, no one uses it. No, there's, there's most of the videos are people just making videos of them doing stuff. Yeah, like, most like, videos are not Let's Plays. They're just people doing nothing. I think for everyday life, the Instagram video and the Vine is mm. looking to fill that void. Oh, you're, you're conceding. Yeah, but Great. that's stupid. No one cares about that. No one cares about life? No, like, no one seeing cares, life in no motion? No one cares about other people's lives. It's already hard enough to read Facebook status updates. A thousand I don't want to have to fucking watch a video. Like, 15 <laughs> seconds? I'm committed to this? No. 15 seconds <laughs> or six much? in the case of Vine, too much. Jeez. Six might be okay. Like, does it take longer to load the video than watch the video? Yes. Waste of time. Sometimes. Absolute waste of time. Stupid. That's I might nice. as well just watch that. No, animated GIFs take forever on the iPhone, too. Animated, no, animated GIFs I like. Work. Animated GIFs I like. If somebody would make yeah. an app that was animated GIFs, or social media that was 100% animated GIFs, I'm, I'm but down it still with that. Takes I'm sure I wish the fine. iPhone loaded it faster. Why do GIFs, animated GIFs load so fucking slowly on the iPhone? You know what's aggravating? No one's ever else is going to experience this. Mm. Do you know that uh, the in-flight Wi-Fi service on American Airlines? Yes. GoGo. Yes. I, I think it's on United too, right? Uh, I don't know. It's it breaks best animated GIFs. Yeah. Like, oh. you, it won't load them. It, it shows looks, one frame. It shows one frame and then it stops, yeah. That's like the weird. ultimate first world problem. I can't see animated GIFs while I'm flying above the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's a huge problem, Ben. You're, Think you're about it. You're experiencing human technology. <laughs> do, you know, do you know how many frequent flyer miles I just hit on this trip to Australia? How many? I'm now at 3 million. Wow. I just broke 3 million. What, what can you do with all that? What I, can, can you get, get like, free flights? I should be able to at this point, What men, do they even mean? They I'm should let me fly the plane for like an hour. <laughs> what did George Clooney get up in the air? At 10 million, he got a wing. Oh, I mean, like, card. it was 10 million was the, the number uh, he Yeah, had? he got, like, some kind of silver card or something. Mm. Or was it oh, 5 million? I thought he got wings. Oh, I love a silver card. He got wings? Yeah. Like an angel? Oh, wait, you mean the... No, 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 no. He looks like, like yeah. the little... Yeah, the wings thingy. Wings that you pin in your shirt? Yeah. They give those to kids every time they get no, on the No, but they don't... Yeah. It's, like, not a special one. This one's probably gold. When I flew back from Australia, uh, I, I got really lucky. I managed to use uh, Miles, and I upgraded to uh, business class Ooh. on the flight back. And I got to ride upstairs in the 747. Ooh. And for the first time ever, I saw the cockpit of the 747. Yeah? I never realized it's not down on the first floor. It's upstairs. I've Doesn't never been on a plane with two floors. Is. No, but... You're not seeing anything out the front of that plane. You're just seeing, yeah. like, sky... You don't even see the ground. They land that plane without seeing the ground. They're just looking at dives. Unless they're that Southwest flight that comes in fucking nose gear first. <laughs> wow. Or the, what was the, the Asian one where... Asiana. Did you hear what happened with that? The, the, the San Francisco television station? Yeah. Oh, they're getting that. sued. They dropped, the, they dropped the lawsuit. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was unbelievable. I can't believe that happened. It was some intern at the <laughs> NTSB who did that. And he was happy about it, right? Didn't yeah, he, he did a red AMA. Nice. He's an idiot. That guy is a fucking I feel like idiot. that's how new five minutes of fame is. Oh, I'll do an AMA. Yeah, but look, there's a difference between five minutes of fame and literally making yourself unemployable for life. I mean, this kid, okay, what do you do, first of all? There was this, what's the name of the plane? Gus, what's the name, name of the airline? Plane. Uh, Asiana. Asi that's not real, is it? Asiana? Yeah, Asian and with an A at the end. So what the intern did was he, I guess he was an intern at the NTSB, and when the local Fox affiliate called to verify the pilot's, the pilot's names, he made up fake names like, some Ting Wong and oh yeah uh, no that's that we thing, too yeah. low yeah because the plane banged came in boom or something like that <laughs> banged in owl and, banged in and then owl. the Fox affiliate ran it as news because they got confirmation from the NTSB but the intern had just made the names up because I guess it was his last day or yeah, something. yeah the, nice. the story was the plane kind of wow. went nose first into the no, runway tail first, tail first. Yeah. that is yeah. an important job that that guy had 
and to do that. And then he posts about it like it's funny on Reddit and did an AMA. Seriously, any employer from this point on, I'm assuming if he worked at the NTSB, he wants a job in either civil service or in aviation. Yeah. I'm assuming. He's mm. not going to be employable. They're not going to employ that guy. I mean, they might because, you know, idiots tend to prosper. But I would think that they search his name for two seconds. They're like, what the fuck? No, we're not hiring Yo, you. Oh, it's that guy? No, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. No People shit. do Googles? What's that? People do Googles on job interviews? You know, uh, I was just talking about this with some people I know in Australia through Ashley. And apparently there, it is not legal to, they were saying this. I don't know. They might have been talking out of their ass. It sounded like they were. But in there, it's not legal for an employer to look at your personal Facebook. Oh, uh, yeah, and, that sounds right. And make decisions based on that. They probably can't ask for your password. You can still see the public facing side. I mean, I, And I that. think what they're saying is the law was that they couldn't make I mean, decisions like, based on that. The like, same way that you decisions. can't ask if someone's pregnant while you're interviewing them. It's like, probably bad etiquette to do decision. that. <laughs> right. yeah, let me tell you something. In, in my experience, never ask somebody if they're pregnant, period. There's never... <laughs> yeah, Things will just, not work out well for you. No. Nine times out of ten, <laughs> you're getting punched. <laughs> Or you're getting a really dirty look. Is that a person there? I don't know. But no, I I can tell you in the U.S., people look at people's Facebooks all the time. Yeah, that's creepy. Yeah, their social media profile. Why is that creepy? You're putting the information out there. There's there's a plug-in I got for Gmail. I forget what it's called. I'll have to look it up. Alan told me about it. That it uh, creates like a, a side pane in your Gmail view. So when you click on a message, it automatically looks that person up on like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Whoa. Twitter. And displays all their social media information. Shows a picture of them. And uh, so you know who you're talking to. Yeah. I feel like, like I just don't give a fuck when I'm like, on Twitter. Like people say to me social media, I was at a conference and they say, when you're on social media, be professional. You know, like employers look at it. And like as the guy was talking, I just tweeted the word cunt like a few minutes ago. Yeah, we'll never be like, able to get real jobs. Fuck. fuck go fuck yourself, Brad. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? No, but I would look, I would <laughs> look, look at somebody's bank. I would look at somebody's face. Banks are real jobs? Profile. Yeah, according to Brandon, once you... Get like a million bucks in the bank, they give you a lollipop. Isn't that the way rewards work on these major things? They give you a really nice set of wings. You they, can don't. <laughs> they don't. Didn't they in the movie? The I can tell what happened. Real. At a million. Is it not? You, at, but he asked what they did in the movie. It's 10 million. million. I'm telling That's you what they did. They gave him a card. I didn't ask once what they did. I That's told like you what they did. Burning. And you tried to correct me with myth. You're like fucking Reddit. Somebody has the right piece of information and tells you the right piece of information. And some jackass is sitting there going, no, it's this, no, it's this, no, it's this. And then he blames it on me. Yeah. And he said, you asked me why. I told you what they did in the movie they gave the guy a goddamn silver card and then what's his name the dude with the big fucking mush mustache not sam Shepard. sam, sam elliott. elliott thank you jj jj's our film buff comes out and shakes his hand as like american airlines ambassador pilot okay we'll that's what fucking it. happened in the movie can we all just let it go here's what happened to me in real life at a million miles american gave me gold status for life which means you can basically oh. get uh, upgrades to first class on a normal Flight, Three? but yeah, no, you got to spend points to get points, them. Yeah. But at least you, even if, oh. if you don't have gold stats, you can't even get the upgrades. Like, okay, you're just stuck with the seat you got. And then at two million miles, they gave me platinum for life, which is like board first, all that other stuff. Which boarding oh. first sounds really like, eh, but yeah, you actually get overhead space. Yeah, yeah. close to boarding you. Boarding first oh. is awesome. Yeah, so it's and it's much better than mm-hmm. standing. Like I never have to stand that big long line waiting to get on the plane because no. I'm always like in the first four or five people to get on. When we first started traveling together, we both liked boarding at the last possible minute. Yeah. Because you didn't want to sit on the plane any longer than necessary. Mm-hmm. But ever since they introduced fees for checked baggage, now everyone carries on and now you got to fucking get on there to get your overhead bin space. You know what I'm going to bring up, don't you? What, that I made us connect as long as possible? Listen, That's here's what Gus needs to do. Shut up. Here's no what Gus needs to do. No one supports you on this. This is a total lie. I support me on this because I was there and I was the only one with any flying experience. Bernie used to fuck dogs. <laughs> I support me on it. I can make up lies too. I was in college. I needed the money. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm a neutral party, so explain. So here's what Gus Gus used to book our travel. I'm going to explain what happened, then he's going to lie. You tell me who's right. We used to book travel through Gus exclusively. He that's a that's by far the shittiest fucking job at Rushi. Sorry, Megan. (laughs) (laughs) Megan's not doing it now because everyone's like, you're like, I just want to fly to San Jose from Austin, and then it should be like, okay, here's your flight on the days you request, and everyone's like. Hmm, I don't know. 8 a.m., that's kind of early. You're like, fucking... Imagine booking your own travel and what a pain in the ass that is, then booking it for other people, and then they hem and haw, and they're just dicks. It's a hard job. It sucks. So let me tell you why Gus was bad at the job that sucks. Because when we first started traveling, a bad part about living in Austin is that there are not many direct flights Mm -hmm. from Austin to other places. We can go to L.A., we can go to New York, Chicago, but everywhere else we got to pretty much connect through Dallas. 
So what Gus used to do, for whatever reason... This story is a lie, by the way, and never, false. Never, never, never. Because he was so inexperienced to travel, I, I was sitting there and I had like these three-hour layovers, or three-and-a-half-hour layovers in Dallas. I'm like, what the fuck is with this? Why am I waiting three hours every time? I finally asked Gus about it, and I said, Gus, can you see if there's like shorter layovers? He goes, oh, there usually are shorter layovers, but I booked the longer layovers so that we don't ever miss our flights, our connecting flights. I can tell you why it's a lie right now with proof. You said I did it because I was an inexperienced traveler. By the time we started Rooster Teeth, I'd already been working at that other place where I've been traveling for fucking years already. So who did I have this conversation with then? Nobody. It wasn't me. I don't know who else you talked to in your day. <laughs> it sure as fuck wasn't me. It I absolutely never was you. It was you can ask every other employee who I booked travel for. Everyone says that story is false and did not happen. I remember because it was so fucking out of character for you. I clearly remember Because I didn't fucking do it. You of did do it. Of course it's out of character. But I just imagine ask this? Ask Matt and Jeff. They'll both tell you. That, that never was happened. You. It was totally you. The bullshit. You wanted longer layovers. Bullshit. Did Jason ever book our travel? No. Never? No. Uh, maybe occasionally, like one or two off trips, but I don't think like not as a regular thing. No. Yeah. The other problem too is you remember, <laughs> you remember how we both went. Through, we went through periods where we wouldn't fly with certain people. I got stuck on a watch list, a no fly watch oh list, where I couldn't check in at the kiosk. You got that, and I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it for a dumb reason though. It was a homeland security thing, and. Uh, it was basically what it was. I'll explain it. This is really one of the dumb things about living in post 9-11 America. Okay. When Red vs. Blue took off, the first season when we started selling DVDs, uh, a bank account that we started for Rooster Teeth had nothing in it, and then all of a sudden we started selling DVDs, and it went up. And Homeland Security had this job of like trying to identify all of a sudden large growing accounts to figure out mm. like where the money was coming from. So I had to meet with my accountant at Homeland Security, and I had to show where every dollar was coming from. Like, we're selling, you know, DVDs for twenty dollars a pop and T-shirts. I go, I can't literally show where every single one of these transactions comes from. It's not, it's not like that. And because it was like a new business, an internet business, the, I just kind of got flagged from that discussion, and I was on this no-fly watch list for like three years. Really weird problem to have, you know, kind of one of those problems you want to have. But anyway, what happened was anybody who flew with me and then ended up on the list as well, <laughs> and then they couldn't check in at the kiosk, so nobody at the company would fly with me. I had to like book my own tickets and yeah, go separately. Separate reservations. And so the you other book one, your own tickets, huh? No, the story falls apart very quickly <laughs> upon further investigation. And this is clearly after the first year because I got stuck on the list like six months after the DVD came out. So I was a year and I a half. I didn't book the first year. You used to book travel before me. No, I, I took over at the fucking apartment in Buda, which was year three. Nah, that's not true. You, that is 100% true. That is true you did that, but we had the conversation in the apartment in Buda, and you did do it. I swear to God. It was, no, I swear the to fucking God. contradictions, are, the, the story falls apart. It's not, it's not falling apart. It's because you were doing it. It fell apart. I'm sorry. Past tense. Nah. The important thing is you're friends now. Yeah, and right. it's all that's, in the past. It's behind us. Part. Let's yeah. just move on with our lives. Yeah, let me read this. Let me read this and we can move on. Please the, do. the other thing is, remember, nobody would fly with Jeff because Jeff went through a two-year period where Jeff could not set foot on a plane and the plane would take off on time. He yeah. had this that weird curse I on him. I forgot about that. Yeah. And hmm. you, if, you got any, if you got on a flight with him, you were delayed two hours. Yeah. Every I, single time. I forgot about that. And I'd never terrible. been on a plane that was delayed until I flew with him. And I think maybe since then, I've been on one or two flights have been delayed. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Like sitting there on the fucking tarmac waiting. waiting forever. Yeah. Broke the curse. Waiting right. to fly above the clouds. I want to remind everyone that this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Onnit and their flagship product, Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain is the first fully balanced nootropic designed to increase focus and mental drive. For our listeners, get 10% off when you use promo code ROOSTER at onnit.com slash gaming. Uh, Onnit, of course, longtime uh, sponsor of the podcast, big fan of their product, highly recommend trying it out. Ooh, let me get a drink of that. Mm. <laughs> this will go good with some Alpha Brain. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I really, really love this stuff. Still using it? I saw... Yeah, um, I just got a new giant tub of it. Uh, I have I have yet to try it, but I want to try it. I'm real. I'm a big ninny about uh, any kind of pills or anything like that. Mm. Have, I ever, have I ever explained to you why that is? No. Did did someone spit in your pill? Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> no. That's why I won't drink out of drinks. But one of the first stories I remember as a kid, like global news stories, oh. was the Tylenol thing. So I'm just I'm kind of iffy about like taking pills, but I'm gonna try on it soon because other people in the company have been trying it now and they've been talking about it. So it's like I can't get. I feel like Join I can't us. get left out. There was a they, yeah. I, uh, I forgot to take it with me to Australia, and I really regretted it. Mm. You know about on it? Oh, you didn't take it with you? Yeah, I fucking forgot it. Yeah? Can you buy it down there? Yeah. They have an international store. They ship everywhere. I think the, I think the version they sell to Australia and New Zealand is different somehow, formulaic. Yeah. It's called Alpha Brain Source. You know what else I ran into down there? Sorry, Ben, we keep cutting you off. But I That's ran fine. into down there. Uh, they don't have high fructose corn syrup in any of their stuff in, uh, 
in Australia, which mm. I, I liked a lot. They also ha don't have State of Decay or uh, it's they don't have freedom. Saints Row 4. Saints Row 4 got banned again. Or got mm. again? I thought, they, I thought they cleared it up. Nope, they got refused classification for the second time. This weekend it happened. Wow. Mm. Ben, what were you going to say? Ben here. Um, so on it does something with dreams, right? Is what I understand. Alpha Brain, Alpha which Brain. is one of their products. Alpha Brain. So I've got a problem with my dreams lately. So I set an alarm on my phone to wake up in the morning, like most people do. But in like the last few months, whenever my alarm goes off to wake me up, it doesn't wake me up. It just integrates into my dream. And then I've been running around in my dream like I'm in a forest or some shit. And I'm like, I just hear this bleeping like marimba noise. For going God's on. sake, let me hear one of your dreams, please. Explain like from beginning to end, like what's a Ben dream? Why are you in the forest running around? Well, I mean, we were trying to, I, no. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get classified on Dot. So, I was with One Direction. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, and for some, and I just, I just, after like half an hour, this marimba noise is going off, and I start to break down in the dream. Like I can't get this noise to stop. I'm going, I'm going crazy, and eventually I realize, oh, I'm sleeping. I need to wake up. Why don't you record what custom ringtones or custom alarms? Yeah, but what would I do? Oh, Ben. Oh. Well, I would do Why that. Would ben <laughs> yeah. Why would Ben want that? Why would you have Brandon record that? <laughs> I'll record, record it. it. Record it right now for me. <laughs> I'll do it. Record it right now. Please, 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 please record it. Record it. You, did I ever tell you the uh, my aim inbound and outbound aim noise? You know that makes no. the delete delete when it, when you get an aim. That's you, the aim client used to do that. We all use yeah. the iMessage now, but I used to make this inbound outbound noise. And one day I decided I'll just have Jason who plays Tucker. I had him actually just record the sound and him going <laughs> bootleet pilut. <laughs> And it drove fucking Matt crazy. I love that sound. We were in the same <laughs> office, and I'd have conversations with people, and you just hear Jason constantly going, "Bootleet, bootleet, 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 bootleet." <laughs> and Matt saying? was like, "Matt would go outside and get mad at Jason." <laughs> and Jason's like, "The fuck? What are you mad at me for? I'm not even in there." God, I used to love that sound. That reminds me of a Reddit thread where, where people were like, "What are you going to miss ten years from now from our decade and our generation?" And one of the top ones was the door closing sound in AIM. Mm. Like, I don't really know that, because AIM was not a thing in England. No one gave a shit about AIM. But, yeah, that's such an uh, iconic thing that no one's ever going to understand. It's really weird. Yeah. It's yeah. gone. And now we can just, like, we'll tap it. into our thoughts and talk directly to each other. I don't know. Future. <laughs> Future stuff. Yeah. Um, there, was a, there was a thread on uh, Reddit about creepypasta? Is that, like, cut and paste that are yeah. scary? Uh, what is that? Is that what that is? What is that? Creepypastas? Anyway, it's like it was, it was a whole thing where yeah. people cut and paste Sounds stuff tasty. into comments on like YouTube or whatever. Mm. And uh, there was one in particular that I read that, that when they, they posted it, it freaked me out a little bit. And I'm going to see if I You're can gonna find it. You're going to put it on the stream for everyone to freak out by? No, I'm going to see if I can find it here. Uh -huh. You know what I noticed too? It's like when you look up stuff on Reddit, like obviously you tend to look up stuff that you just saw and is now gone like a day later or yeah. 12 hours later. It's like somehow it's drifted right. away. Yeah. But then when you look that stuff up on Reddit, you don't get that. Oh. You get stuff that's lower rank, but yeah, from like eight months ago. Well, I never search on Reddit. I search Reddit via Google. So search for what you want and then type space site colon reddit.com. That works way better with most sites. Yeah. Yeah. Reddit.com yeah. colon. No, site colon reddit.com. Nah, I'm not going to do it my way. Don't go to site not colon. Gonna work. That's going to be a different thing. Yeah, that way, that way you, can, you can execute your <laughs> yeah, search term. I found it. There it is right there. Two days ago. Yeah, there it is. On a specific domain. It's way better yeah. than any site's built in search. See, we all learn a little something when the podcast is live. <laughs> I've, I've been known to search a few things via Google. What, is, what the hell is your cap? Oh, I got this uh, from somebody in Sydney. Um, she works at Polygon. It's the Sydney Roosters. It's a rugby oh, club. Oh, in, oh uh, that's cool. In oh. Sydney. And she gave it to me. It was really cool. I like Polygon. Rugby's a tough sport. I could never play I could never play any sport, but rugby is definitely at the top of the list of sports I could not play. Oh. No, you would get. There's like no position. Maybe the ball. I do, don't people I do retire now, after the age of like. Sport. Don't people retire after the age of like 25? Yeah, it's like it's 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 not a sport you those, can play too long. And those guys who play rugby are genetically like different than everybody else. It's like they're just massive I think, walls of muscle. What's one of the positions? Like the ear puller? I have no fucking <laughs> clue. I have no clue. Would you watch like a under 125 pound rugby match? <laughs> like, <laughs> Lightweight rugby. Just like small dude. <laughs> that, would, that would be tough. Would you watch we small to, dudes? We used to play a game in college, um, which was called push ball. And it was all the different fraternities would play it in like intramural day. And you in know those day? big intramural. six okay. foot rainbow balls? Like they're six foot yeah. in diameter. So you, you can like, like if you're my height, you can almost see over the top of it. They're a little bit bigger than six feet in diameter. 
So it's a, hu it's a huge ball. And they put it out in the middle of a football field. And we could have, if I remember correctly, I think we'd have 12 guys on the field at one time. Okay? And our goal was down there. And their goal was down there. And we'd line up on the opposite side, try to push the ball to our goal. Okay? That, that's 100% of the rules. That was it. It was basically a 12-man fight with a huge fucking rainbow ball in the middle of it. Your job it sounds was, like a Halo game type. Yeah, yeah. There was four people who would push on the ball. Those were usually your biggest guys, and they would push on it. Then there were guys, so there's four guys usually on the side pushing, and then the ball would want to go up, too. So you'd have to like, try to push it down and push it forward. Then there's other dudes who would come running. You would run up the backs of your guys and go over the top of the ball to hit the other guys off the other side who were pushing in your direction. Why couldn't you run around? And you would literally go over the top, like, punching like this. And then there were these guys. The position was called hookers, which sounds weird. Interesting. Go figure. Uh, and their whole job was to run by at full speed around the backside of the ball and grab people by the fucking neck and pull them off the ball so that you could get the ball moving. And then the other people, the other people who were left on the team were basically, their job was just to run around and punch everybody else <laughs> who was trying to <laughs> interfere. What is wrong no, with that? Is there like an international it was, committee? It was horrible. It was really, it was one of the most brutal things I've ever been involved just with. push ball. But it was still push absolutely ball. fun. It was called what push you, ball. What do you play? Push ball. Yeah, and it was, uh, it was only played one day a year, and it was uh, a very violent competition. And that was, was it, allowed. Was it the day before, like, your health care benefits lapsed? <laughs> they make sure everyone's covered? Dude, we were in college. It didn't matter. Oh, shit, there's lots of... There's lots of photos of this. Push ball. Oh, I thought you were looking up your creepy pasta. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't oh, find it. Track. Google's failing me. Uh, I, could, I could show it to you too, but it reminds me of conversations that Gavin and I have had about feeling like we're in a coma. Right. Uh, let me see here. I'm gonna see if I can find this thing. How do you know what so, a coma is though? Creepy pasta. Like you, you, you encounter weird situations. Like this shouldn't like, be like happening. Like every day. Like it, yeah, in real life, too many coincidences happening. Oh, like, so, you, like, so that's a coma to you. Well, it's like your brain's creating it. Like it's not real. And it's it impossible for these coincidences to be happening. Mm. Uh, it has been reported that some victims of trauma during the act uh, would retreat into a fantasy world from which they could not, in capitals, wake up. In this catatonic state, the victim lived in a world just like their normal one, except they weren't traumatized in that world. The only way they realized they needed to wake up was a note that they found in their fantasy world. It would tell them about their condition and tell them to wake up. Even, though, even then, it would often take months until they realized they were ready to discard the fantasy world and please wake up. That's an interesting thing. Yeah. Like, that fucks with people's, like, you know, like this, this feeling that they're not living within their own reality. There was a, a Futurama episode like that where Leela gets stung by the space bee mm -hmm. and she's mm. in a coma and she keeps getting told to wake up. By Fry, because he's the he's actually awake in real life, at her bedside asking her to wake up. Nice. So, prop props to Futurama. Futurama well, did it first. Speaking of television, the first Homeland trailer came out today. Awful. Is anyone a Homeland? Uh, I've fan seen season one of Homeland, but I just couldn't get into it. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I binged all on like all of it in within the space of a few days. I was like, I've been I've been wanting to go back and uh, rewatch season one and watch yep, season there two. Goes. But Oh, we're watching. Sorry, we're push watching. Ball? We're watching oh. pushball stuff on YouTube. Something's yeah. happening over there. <laughs> See if you can pull it up. <laughs> That's what she said. Did she? she? Anybody? Could she? Anybody? <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, she could say I that. Can't and, relate, and by guys. the way, this reminded me of this because one of the teams that would come out and play was the rugby team would come out and play, and so it was like uh, it was always a nightmare. This just looks bizarre. Yeah. That's so exactly is this what it like is. a legitimate like sport with tournaments no, and no, shit? No, it's oh, so it's not like ultimate frisbee. No, that's an actual thing. This is just like. Board guys making up a game. Oh, well, that's thank God they, they need Final Cut X to edit out the fucking boring part. <laughs> yeah, Tell me, right? Is, they is, would stabilize the shit out of that video. I'll tell JJ, you. JJ, you would uh, edit this. You had like. Let's eight stop talking about the video. That way we can cut away from it. <laughs> All right. Is that how it works? <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're back. That was such a great video that was on the screen. Okay. But the discussion Gavin and I would have been was that I you were thinking, we had about. so many coincidences with one another. That right. it seemed like we were fabric. It got to the point where it was only we were fabricating reality on the I fly. I mean, I think with you and Gavin, here's what I've determined: Go ahead. is that you're from America, he's from England. You two came together when he was like 14. It's right. like fate. It's like the universe bringing the two of you together. Underage guys overseas. in a love story. That's the dream of the internet. Mm -hmm. You're like a proton. He's like an electron. Tell me about Let's it. get together. Mm. Listen, I trust Ga Gavin immeasurably. Like last time we were on the podcast, we were talking about the social media thing, and Gavin said that he likes Facebook better than anything else. I was like, nobody fucking uses. I'm not Facebook sucks. He thought Facebook was cool. Yeah, which and is so, the weirdest thing I've ever. So like in the last week, I actually went and posted some photos on Facebook, and I nah. actually have enjoyed using Facebook more than anything else. In fairness, I agree with Gavin. 
What's that? I agree with Gavin. I, think I do. I, I, I really, believe it or not, I actually trust what Gavin says a lot. I listen yeah. to Gavin when he talks. Well, the whole reason, I don't know if you know this, the whole reason I, mean, I we- wear weird yeah. socks is because of Gavin. What do I have on today? I have on my California Don't Republic you wear socks. a different pair of socks for every day of your life? No, 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 I don't do that. That's, That's the wasteful. dream. One day. One day. It's One when, day that'll happen. It's when you join Facebook. Like when I got on, it was just people in colleges and universities and only the people you know. And then at the point in time now where your, your mom and dad are on it, and your grandparents. Do you censor I mean, you yourself at all on social media knowing that your parents follow you? Well, I mean, I use custom privacy all the time. Custom privacy? And it's not just my parents. It's like I have whole groups in which I like, mm. it's, it's really awesome. You it's too complicated people to like, you can't know what I'm mm-hmm. doing tonight. But no, I mean like with Twitter as well, that people can follow you even if you don't want them to. <laughs> no, even, you if, no? even if you block them, they'll just make a new account. Yeah. Oh. So, oh. Or just browse you without can block being signed people on in. Twitter? That's like that's, anything. Doesn't yeah. work. Oh, blocking's the best thing. I block people all the time. Yeah. People tweet that honey thing to me. It's a one button. It's like, I it's shouldn't really even bring easy. it up. I shouldn't even bring it up. It's really easy and fast to block people on Twitter, which oh, is awesome. Yeah, it's just one button. Just click uh, on the post and click block. So the, the, weird, the weird thing I have when I sleep is I have apnea. So a lot of times in my dreams, like I'll, I'll be dreaming, I'll have a normal dream, and then all of a sudden it's hard to breathe. Oh. And in, in my dream, I'm struggling to breathe, and it's like I can't get enough air, and then I wake up, and it's like I haven't taken a breath So in which forever. do you find weirder, that that happens or that your, your feet is falling and flaking and falling apart? Neither is weird. Yeah, They're do you think weird. if you died, do you think Esther would feed you to the dog? <laughs> <laughs> would she cook me is the better She'd question. She'd just roll you out of the bed into the dish. Would I be fresh, <laughs> would I be fresh enough for the dog to eat you know, straight away? or How does that work? <laughs> the dog would fucking dive at you. <laughs> oh, we got two dogs now. Yeah. Are you happier? Do you like the two dogs? Yeah, the dogs are awesome. Is it like having kids but not with all the money and hassle? Uh, no, no. I don't, think, I don't no. know. I, I have kids. The I doubt day, it. People I was in the that car with Caleb, and he was like, like "You need to start thinking about having kids." With soon. With who? Caleb. Oh, from Achievement Hunter, and he was like, "You need to start thinking about having kids soon." Does Caleb like, have any kids? He's twenty-one. He, he's he's being prompted for him. He's like the same age as you. Fuck that. Wait, who needs to start thinking about having kids? You Me. Or, or you need to start thinking about like you're twenty-one soon. He was like, "Oh yeah, like twenty-five. That's a good time." I was like. No, I'm alright. You got plenty of time. That's like twenty percent more of your life. That's the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, you got plenty of time. What's the age to have kids? Like, what's what's the age? Seventy. See, I I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, you're gonna die anyway. Fucking go out with a bang. I'm saying thirties. I want to preserve my twenties for having fun and larking about and faffing about. I don't want to be faffing thinking about, about you know people being made. That's just too much stuff to do. I, don't know. I get having a lot of kids when you put them to work, like on a farm. But now they just take away resources. <laughs> they take away fun. So expensive, aren't they? Yeah, it's like. You want to go somewhere? That. They can't do nope. anything. Uh, yeah. You wanna, what? Want to go on a trip to Australia? Nope. Got to take the fucking kid. Oh yeah. right, yeah. Got to worry true. about the kid. Yeah, it's <laughs> like yeah, you just gotta like drag around. I'm gonna have a shit. child. They're mm. gonna hear this. <laughs> like, Good fuck kid. F- attention, future kid. You have ruined my life. I regret <laughs> ever having you. You were a huge mistake. <laughs> No, that's, that's not a fucking, even a joke. That's a fucking time capsule right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to show it to that kid in 20, 2050. Hey, kid, here's how you unplug the machine. Just grab a hold really hard and just yank. And then it comes right out of the wall. And then you can feed him to the fucking dog. <laughs> My Good future dog. By then, it'll, be, like, it'll be a cyber dog. <laughs> Good luck. Well, you the third, right? Yeah, the third. Would you name your kid Gustavo Cirola the fourth? Absolutely. You would? Yeah. Do you feel uh-huh. bad not continuing on the tradition? No. Dude, if you did that, I would totally call your kid Quattro or something <laughs> like that. I'd give, I'd give him, what was that? I'd give him a, na- a nickname like that. I'd have to do no, that. No, I really like my name. I think a lot of, pe- a lot of people, I think, are unhappy with the name, so I, I think my name's awesome. I feel like awesome. if you had, like, a crown on you and, like, a robe, Gustavo Sorolla, it sounds like a dictator. That's you know his middle name? You. Huh? Elliot. You know his, Elliot. Elliot. <laughs> Just throw him Elliot's a name. common Stop Mexican Elliot. name. Stop <laughs> Elliot. Bland is middle name. It's like ever. 20% of people in Mexico are named Elliot. <laughs> so you'd, you'd prefer, I guess, Juan? <laughs> that, that's Juan. a better guess than fucking Juan. Elliot. <laughs> Elliot. Is it Pedro? <laughs> you want to keep going? You, really, keep, like, you can probably guess it Mexican pretty quickly. Mexican stereotypical names till we get I to I know. It. You mind if I say your middle name? Go for it. Jorge? Raul. Raul. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that nice. should be your first name. It's a good name. <laughs> I have options. I'm open. Just call it. I don't know. Brady, what's your middle name? Uh, your, is your first name is your first name Brandon? It is. My legal first name is Brandon. What does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Why did you qualify? qualify? Oh, because like that's the thing. Like you're asking. Like a lot of people's first names. You could have just answered yes. My first name is Brandon. Why <laughs> did you throw legal. legal in there? Yes, that is. My no, because I mean a lot of people would say my first name is you know whatever. But I mean reality, it's yeah, just like just a nickname. Yeah, but just What is, is And I answered. Really it's Brandon. Legally. Uh, yes. yes. We, How, wink. <laughs> yeah. mm. So How commonly do people change their first name in America? Is it a big thing? Hello. No, no, no. It's right like. Here. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot what, what's your middle name? Uh, Farhang. It means culture, and it was my grandfather's. It's not Elliot. No. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Elliot. It could have been. That'd be a good name. That would flow well. Farhang. Yeah, yeah it was my. Elliot it means culture. Farhang. It was like my grandfather's attempt for me to always carry on my culture, but it didn't work. That's cool. Hmm. It's. Wasn't it like good a disguise, job, there, eh. Elliot? What's I don't know the language. Name, my name is Charles. Very proper. So very very, pro- very proper. British. Hey, are you excited about the British baby? The the little prince thing? Nah. I'm so sick nah. of... Nah. He's not going to be anyone. Are you not he's going to be the fucking king. In a long time. like, but I'm going to be dead by the time he's king. Probably. I, don't I know. doubt that. You know what i got to say? I don't, I don't think I'm going to get sick of stuff anymore. I just don't pay attention to stuff. Nothing lasts long enough anymore to get sick of. Like, I, I, the only reason fickle. I got sick of the royal baby yeah. was when we went down to Australia because of jet lag. I would wake up early, so I'd turn on the news. And that's all they fucking talked about. Bullshit, dude. Constantly. Australia, that there's o- the, the shooting the, immigrants out of the water. The immigrants also was the other thing. Thank you, pardon. Australia's fuck crazy, dude. Last time I was down there, uh, or one of the first times I went down there, they were in the middle of debating whether or not <laughs> when Asian fishing boats come down into Australian waters, if they can sink them, like, right away. Or if they have to give them a warning and then but sink them. Why would they do that? And now they've totally stepped it up where it's like, oh, there's immigrants coming. Yeah, we f- we're going to sink them. And they, they, they sunk and a boat. So they're going to murder lives, people that want to come to their country. If Pretty anyone much. lives, they take them to a third island, like uh, New Guinea, I think. They take them to, like, some other island, and they, like, leave them there. That's, That's fucked up. That's really strange. That's fucked up. That's pretty fucked up. I have to admit, that's pretty it's fucked up. the world up. we live in, people. Well, that's the world the Australians live in. Yeah. yeah. But Not the first world. Speaking of, I gotta bring this up. Um, I did a cameo in Freddy Wong's Video Game High School Season 2. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, you should go check it out. It's really awesome. It's a great, se- uh, great series that Freddy puts out. Freddy's a good friend of the company. Is like our two years he's done. He was keynote last year and was our mar- one of our marquee speakers this year. Yep, he showed, uh, he showed uh, the, the first time showing the trailer for Video Game High School Season 2 at RTX this year. Oh, that guy yeah. was fast, man. So he got the trailer done at RTX. Actually, some of that footage we shot at RTX. Uh, and then it, it just came out like this last week. So, <clears throat> the way Freddie describes it, it was an intern that typed up all the credits. And because I spell my name in a dumb way, and what people need to realize is my name is a misspelling. This is not the way Bernie is spelled. It's because I spell it like it's based on my last name. Which is awesome because it makes my name very searchable, which is an important thing mm-hmm. in today's modern times. You say to create a personal brand, would you say? I love to create. <laughs> you know I hate that word. But uh, the other problem too is now since autocorrect has been on the rise, like, the number of times that my misspelled name has been then spelled correctly, quote-unquote incorrectly, uh, has been on the rise as well, since autocorrect has become a big thing. Yeah. And my name in the video game high school credits was spelled as Bernie Burns with an E, oh. Bernie. And goddamn, I, I absolutely don't care about it. I've seen it a thousand times spelled that way, and I realize that is the actual per, 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 I can't even You know, speak. that looks wrong to me. With an E. It just looks weird. I've seen, like, with a U so much. It's like, burn, that's a word. Yeah. You say that word, burn, and then E. And I get, like, it just makes sense I that get way. the name Bernie's not that common, and a lot of people who do encounter it in our audience, I might be the only Bernie that they know. Right. And so they see it spelled that way. But it is actually, my name is misspelled. But it's fucking brutal because everybody keeps pointing it out. Like, they just keep bringing, and, like, CCing Freddy on it, and, like, essentially making him feel bad about the fact that he put saying, my name in the credits. Are you saying that people on Twitter CC people on Twitter? Yes. That, yeah, that's an old, that, no one says they They're CC like, people lol. on Twitter. <laughs> they spell the <laughs> name. What does CC stand for? Carbon copy. Oh, look you. What does BCC stand for? Blind carbon copy. Nice. Oh, I know my shit. What, are those, what is the etymology of those words? Back in the olden days when they would have to physically copy look at memos. You. I'm proud of you. Thank, finally, uh, it took like six years. I finally got Gus's approval. It's an old man thing. <laughs> it's true. I'm yeah, you have to use carbon paper to make uh, copies. See? Carbon uh, copy. Interesting. <laughs> I'm getting called out for calling Australia fucking crazy. I'm sorry. The, <laughs> we actually like Australia. We love Australia. A lot, a so, lot. Uh, someone, some people got upset that we made fun of the UK in one of our interviews down there. What did you say? What did you say about them? I think we said fuck the UK. <laughs> no, that's, that's all right. Yeah. They want to block my pawn. They can they fuck themselves. <laughs> Is that going to affect you much? I mean, well, they can turn it on. I mean, it's, it's off by default in the filter. But, like, the things that they're blocking entirely and censoring entirely is, like, American torrents. And I want to watch American TV. So that's going to annoy me. I'm going to, you know, figure that out. But in so a, the pornography block is off by default? No, it's on by default. It's like, you, there's a settings panel that you can, like, say, I want to be able to get porn on my account. That kind of thing. Oh, is it like an ISP? Yeah, by the ISP, yeah. Oh. And the ISPs are legally obligated to do that. 
Google keeps Safe Search on by default. You have to turn it off, right? Yeah, you have to like sign in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's kind of like Safe Search, just on a much broader scale. But well, it's yeah. tied into like an institution. It's not just a random yeah. app. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, I just, I just didn't understand how they were going to do the blocking and how the end customer was going to be able to control it. But yeah, I I've seen some of, the, some of the screenshots of it. And like some of them make sense, like suicide and self-harm is a category that you can turn off by default. And that's, you know, they're all off by default. That's, that makes sense. And there's things like, like web discussions is off by default. And I'm like, I guess we, can, we, can't, a, we if, can't talk to people? If you don't want a kid to participate in the discussion, like to be able to post stuff. What do you I mean can, about reading the comments, Gus? About reading comments? There's a new movement to not read the comments. There's a new movement? What I thought it was always a movement. What do you mean? Well, like, people always talk about don't read the comments. In fact, there's a Twitter account called don't read the comments. Oh. And like it tweets like once a day saying, um, you know, you're, you're watching or reading an article. And it's really interesting. You're going to read the comments. <coughs> but don't forget, don't read the comments. It's all like that. Like, Most it, don't sites, read the I don't read comments. So I feel like there's almost never any decent insight provided by comments. Do you read comments on the material that we produce? Um, on our website, I will. Mm -hmm. uh, on like YouTube and other sites? No, absolutely You can't not. possibly read all the comments. No. There's, there's a ton. I'll, I'll read a lot of them. Yeah. Typically, like if you're on Reddit and you read the top ones, it's like someone debunks something immediately. Like a headline is like really extravagant, you know, you know, exaggerating. And then the top comment is like, well, they've got their facts wrong. It's yeah. actually blah, blah. And they cite stuff. So that's, that works. When I posted RT Life on Saturday, I had no idea what video they were watching because the first hour was just Random, random, and it wasn't. It was like a single thread. Like everybody was talking about the same thing, but it had nothing to do with the video. It's probably people just get off on a tirade. Was it all bots? No, they're real people. They were just arguing with each other. I find too. How it's like if you when a first comment goes by, if like especially on YouTube, somebody can make a comment, and that can <coughs> that the responses to that because YouTube comments just fly by. Yeah. At yes. least at least on our video, we get a lot of traffic on our channel, um, and the replies to a comment will then keep that thing going. Yeah. And that can like bob it up and down for like an hour Do you know or two. Yeah. It dominates the conversation. Do you know that people are still like arguing about the video that we did like three years ago about American history? I love it. I go video. on it sometimes, it's like, they're still arguing about so things. It's like, let them. it go. It's new to them though. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> Stuff like that's yeah, ever been like people like, who watch it We've not the promoted it for a long time. Like people yeah, have seen it But all they may that time find again. it in a related video or something. Mm. What's that video up to, Ben? Well, I don't know. Views what, you mean like view count? I don't know. Yeah, let me, let me No, I mean like fucking time-wise. Because <laughs> I'm sure that changes all the <laughs> Has time. Has he gained any weight? He's asking me a question and I don't know. Like What's it called? England versus US? America versus England, yeah. US rooster teeth. Let's see if we get that. That's a video that Ben and I did where I quizzed him about US history. And there's a yeah. July video a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to more of those. I think it would be good if there were more of those. Well, there might be. Who knows? We talked about it before. We've already made some more. When are we going to post those? Soon? Yes, there's one going up them. very soon. Yeah, they're arguing here. Eight hours ago, they're arguing at the Battle of Britain. How many views is it at? See, they did that. Uh, 1.5 million. Oh, that's good. Hmm? Here, let me, uh, let me read this. I want to talk some more about that. Um, I'm sure you've tried Hulu.com, but I wanted to remind you about Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you watch thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere. Uh, stream it on your TV or on the go with your smartphone or tablet. Why stand in line or ride a train and just stare at your feet? You could be watching your favorite shows on Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus is a great way to binge watch your favorite shows. It's got a ton of episodes from great comedies like SNL, Community, Modern Family, South Park, Red vs. Blue, and thousands of other shows. Red vs. Blue. Hulu Plus is only $7.99 a month. That's $7.99 for all the sh shows, movies you can watch. Catch up on current shows, binge on an old favorite, or catch a great movie. You can do it all on Hulu Plus. Right now you can try Hulu Plus for a couple of weeks for free when you go to HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. So make sure you use HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth to get an extended free trial uh, so you know that we sent you. So once more, that's HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. They've got a ton of great TV shows. You don't get that in the UK, but no. we can enjoy the shit out I, of it here. I, a, f a few days ago, literally, I think I Instagrammed it. I went on Hulu Plus in my hotel, and I realized they've got every Yu-Gi-Oh! episode ever. And I was like, incredible, this is my next few months sword. They've got Downton Abbey. Do you ever watch Downton Abbey? What the hell is that? What'd you call it? You got Downton? D D Downton, oh, Downton Abbey. Abbey. Downton Abbey? Yeah. You said, I thought you said like Downton Abbey. Downton like, Abbey. Down. Oh nah, shit! Is that the name of the show? Yeah. Downtown. Do you know up until this very moment in time, I thought it was Downtown Abbey. <laughs> like, I did. Let's all go downtown. Down, How are you doing? Yeah. No, yeah, I didn't like know that. that. At all. I said absolutely not like that. Yeah, they got a ton of stuff. So uh, check it out. Apparently, they have every Yu-Gi-Oh episode. <laughs> they do do that. So go look at that. If you how want. many how many Yu-Gi-Oh episodes are there? There's like 200 or something. Oh, that's crazy. You know, I just did a uh, a video with E from Xbox Live. I did one of those game time videos where we play a game, like a kind of a sl slower game, or mainly it's got to be a game like on one screen, so there's not a lot of flipping back and forth. 
uh, and E from Xbox Live talked about how they deliver content. I had to edit that conversation, but he actually talked for a little bit about specifically how they deliver uh, Netflix, and mm. he talked about Hulu content as well, about how all that stuff is delivered over Xbox Live. Yeah. And talked about for Hulu, how they have a you know big database of all the things that you basically have purchased, if you have, if you have that, and how it determines like how those uh, files are shared across these massive content delivery networks. Right. Um, yeah, I don't think you could speak very specifically to how Hulu does it. I'm not even sure that's public information if you knew. Um, but it was really interesting the way like these, like, like if you watch a movie or let's say a TV show, like I don't know, what's something that's on Hulu, Red vs. Blue, for instance. Um, Plug. It, it sits on an origin server somewhere, like a massive server. And that's where that file lives. And then when people download it, then it like propagates out across the network. So a CDN. CDN, there you go. And so it's like, that's not even by file now. It's by chunks. It's like the chunks of the file go. Hmm. And it's like, it just delivers this content everywhere. And it's just crazy the way that stuff works. Mm -hmm. And it's, it sucks for people who are outside the country that don't have it. Do you have anything the equivalent of Hulu in a different country? Uh, I mean, we have, for all the broadcasters, we have like BBC iPlayer, for really like the main, everything. Like you can watch anything online. I don't have TV. I've not had TV for a long time. I just watch it all through my computer legally for British things. American things I don't watch legally, but British things, yeah. So yeah, there's, a, there's entire shows that I have watched on Hulu. Like, I, I never watched 30 Rock on TV oh, ever. Really? I watched 100% of 30 Rock on Hulu. I watched, uh, I think I watched the first couple seasons like that, and then it got to the point where I watched a lot of stuff like that, where it's like, I'll just wait till the next day and watch it on demand. You know, and it's kind of a pain in the ass a little bit when content expires, like these, del these right. deals they have expire and then something Licensing goes deals, away. Yeah. But as an offshoot of that, then the service also kind of renews itself every now and then, where it's like, I feel like, oh, I've watched all of 30 Rock, let me find something else to watch. Well, I don't want to watch Wipeout. Uh, and then I come back like in a week and suddenly it's all new stuff mm -hmm. on there and I can go back and watch it all. But here's the thing about being on so many social networks you're talking about, I don't have time to watch TV. Like I'll watch the TV that I watch, but I don't say, oh, I'm gonna watch like X that I've not seen before. Like I don't just like, crap, like channel surf. Like channel surfing is not a thing that I do. I will watch a show that I know and that I, you know, subscribe to essentially. But that's it. What about a lot of quality shows? Recommend? For on a social network. I mean, network. that really, that yeah, really happens. It. Like they did that with Game of Thrones. Like everyone in England loses their mind over Game of Thrones. And I was like, I'll, I watched like six episodes. How the fuck like, do they now. watch it? They they all torrent it. Really? In England, it's crazy big. Because in England, the actual channel is like a paid for, like it's a premium. So know, is it so in the US? That's what it's in the US. It's on, H it's on it's HBO US. here, which is a premium channel. Okay, but yeah, everyone downloads. And it's so, everyone, like people that I thought my friends that I didn't think would be tech savvy, turns out they are, they know so, how to use Torrents. But what is, what is the channel on which you can watch Game of Thrones in? Sky One. Okay. Sky, Sky, Atlant one. Sky Atlantic. It's not even the main one. It's like a really weird offshoot. Mm -hmm. So it's really bizarre. Well, they probably, they probably pay a lot of money for the rights to Game yeah. of Thrones, and they're probably putting it on that channel in order to promote that channel like, and get more people to subscribe They did it with it. Glee, where Glee was on the terrest like the main broadcaster that's free to air. You know, like, everyone loved Glee. And then it went to this like kind of commercial private one. Like they bought the rights because they just bid so much money for it, and then no one watched it. Yeah, like, no one pays for that channel. You know, I forget you watch Glee. I forget sometimes that Ben is a young child. As a kid, <laughs> that's true. It's difficult to. Are you yeah. upset about the dude who died on Glee? Or how are you how are you holding up there? How am I holding up? I've not watched Glee for like three years. Don't do that, Brandon. <laughs> I mean, he's a. I mean, I mean, let's not uh, offend people. He's a child. <laughs> RT podcast. But he, I mean, he was a drug addict. Is that what the deal? Yeah. Yeah. He Allegedly. Or was he like confirmed? No, he. Out? They sent him to rehab. He was doing rehab, and then he just kind of had too much. And Young died. guy. Yeah. It's a shitty situation. I mean, it's it's hard to feel super super bad. I mean, he did it to himself, but it's still shitty. It sucks. You yeah. Know. Like, no. Especially I, you know, when I, like he's portraying a young person that I mean I don't really know, but I think for if you were like a teenager now and Glee was your thing, I don't know if Glee is a thing for anyone, but if like someone huge. who portrays like a teenager in high school then immediately dies from like being this crazy drug addict adult and it's like well he's the, oh, he's real the life good guy like, in the show yeah i think that's the, the issue he's the good guy in the show and i think a lot of people do look up to him yeah so it's a shame shitty situation well listen i mean i i have a i have a big family and uh it's it's easy to say stuff like you know oh he did it to himself or whatever but when you have a big enough family and you have people like who are very genetically close to you and you see them like struggle with that kind of stuff, it's like it just that stuff gets yeah. hold of some people. Yeah. You know what and I mean? he was a nice guy. Like you could like in the like you see his tweets, like people were showing like stuff he was doing days before he died, and like he was a nice guy. Like he's not like he was, you know, some kind of bum on the street. Like he was, you know, a really nice bloke and it just like turned out they had this thing that 
you know, I think that happens to a lot of people is that it's just something that they can't, they, they, they get addicted to, they can't control it. Yeah, yeah. he couldn't get out and of it. And then it's just a bad thing happens. When you do 23andMe, it tells you if you're uh, more, more, uh, like, well, you're more likely to get hooked on heroin. You're more prone to See, it. See, I don't know, yeah. like, how did that work though? Like, what is the thing that makes you likely to get addicted to a thing? Because I feel like I could to I'm not gonna say that. I could try a thing knowing that I'm not gonna let myself get attached to it. There's genetic markers, maybe you can't control it. You don't know. Yeah. I mean, you honestly, Ben, you don't I know. You could, you could try something and it just grabs a hold of you. I mean, just, you don't know. Imagine like you mm. need food to survive, like you'll eat food. Imagine you need food to survive, okay. You ben, need food I, to survive, and so you'll eat because you're like, I will die if I don't have food. It's the same thing psychologically for these people. That's why they continue to do drugs, even if they want to get out of it. But it's a known fact that you need food to survive, whereas other things it's like that. No. But well, you're, you're assuming would, that it's yeah, completely I would, yeah, rational. Yeah, I would assume that my, my, I, I would have the integrity of mind to know that yeah. I don't need this. It's just a thing. I well, try to stop buying my nails. The most common thing to, to look at is alcohol. Alcohol gets hold of some people where they have to have right. a drink or multiple drinks every day. Like I'll have a party in my house, a beer. I, I now buy, I shouldn't tell you all this, I buy beer that doesn't have paper labels so that <laughs> it doesn't like rot the labels off and I can just use the beer again at the next party for whenever that is. Let wow. me tell you a story, <laughs> oh, story about time. drinking beer at Bernie parties. <laughs> I'm excited about this. I once went to... Uh, a party at Bernie's house, and he had a, a cooler full of beer, bottles of beer, like this one. And uh, I reached into the cooler, pulled it out, and I popped the top off, and uh, it was a clear bottle, like a, I don't know what it was. But Back I looked at it. it, and there was like a ring of rust all around the lip. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's kind of gross. So I put it aside, and I pulled another one out of the cooler, I opened it, and it also had the ring of rust. So I went to Bernie, I was like, how long have these been sitting in the cooler? And Bernie said, I don't know, two years? <laughs> oh, not two years. So I they had been know, sitting there in gosh. water to the point where they had rusted up for years. Are you more embarrassed that I would have a party and I wouldn't want to see you for another two fucking years? I wouldn't invite you back over? I can't drink enough to drink all the beer you bought two years ago, <laughs> apparently. No, and I will, I will, like, I'll have a party and I'll buy booze for the party, Here's the thing. liquor and a, beer. Is, that, is it beer thing or are you a spirit person? Like no, what? like I'll buy bottles of booze, like liquor and, right. uh, I'll go to have my next party and I'll go get the bottles of liquor. I'll look at them and they're like literally covered in dust. When yeah. I'm at my house, I just don't ever think to drink. It's just not a thing that I do. I mean like in American parties, because I still don't get it. I've been trying to figure out for like six years. Do people like, like beer seems so popular here. I don't feel like beer is very big in England. Like we just drink spirits all the time. Maybe just because we don't. I don't know. It's like, a cultural thing? Yeah. yeah. Beer is a pretty big part of it. I feel like, I feel like beers yeah. and beer are a big thing. Isn't there like a big pub culture with like different beers? Yeah, but like younger people pint? wouldn't go really to pubs. You're not drinking pints you, of whiskey. Shaun of the Dead, they went to the fucking Winchester. No, I'm saying, a pint. there's a whole movie coming I'm out saying, this week. Like, yeah, yeah, I want to see that. But I'm saying like at university, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't go to, basically we have a different system to you where we have pre-drinks where we drink for a few hours and then we go clubbing. And That's like, a totally different system. Than there's what people in the UK where I go, what the fuck is he talking about? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You and your friends don't drink beer. drink beer. You and your friends. No, I've been to, I know, I've been drinking weed but aren't my friends. And not, not, no one really has beer. It's all just, let's just buy a bottle of rosé, buy a bottle of wine, and just down it all. No one has out. kegs? Is our kegs Kegs are not a thing, no. Do you have red party caps? We do not have that. I bought some <laughs> from CVS just to take home. <laughs> They're in my hotel just room. Shipping them back to you. Foreign, so foreign people are so fucking yeah, excited about Did red party cups. So we had a, a, a party while we were down there at PAX uh, at the Kodiak Club in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Did you see that they had those red solo cups at the door? They did. They were wow. wrong. They were they did the wrong cups or? Did, did you see them? No. Like they weren't quite right. So they were red and plastic, but instead of having the rings going this way around them, they were <laughs> like vertical. What? Like all the way around it, I was like, "The fuck is this?" See, so just throw, you go. Go. Him go. And I was like, "This is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't right." Then they cried because there's an old sham. What even blown. is that? Is that like is there one company that has a monopoly on red Solo cups? Solo. Is that what it's literally called? It, the co the company is Solo. S O L O. What the? They have their own song too. You just, go, you just go buy a bunch of cups and then you just need it for a party. Yeah, they just I just buy to be cups like plastic cups that you can see through. No. Nah. In red fact, cups. at university, I'm so undomesticated. I just buy plastic for everything. Plastic knife, plastic fork, plastic plates. Can't do it. Plastic cups. Can't eat. It's can't, amazing. Can't it's the eat. way to live, Bernie. No. no washing up. I also can't eat off paper plates. I can't fucking nah. stand it. Nah, that I, goes I hate it. Off paper plates. I just hate it. I just like, I'm, I'm eating food. I just want a goddamn plate and just I want some metal. Open like your like mind and soul to paper plates. That would fit into your mental state of wanting to get new socks every day. Mm. It's like, nope. get a new plate. When you're done, throw it away. When you eat again, forget about it. Can't do it. Hate it. I also I also like the I, I like new socks, so the front end of that I like, 
It's like, it's like saying I want to eat a meal off a clean plate every time. I do, and I, d I actually do do that. But like saying I want to wear new socks every day, it's something I do want to do. I don't want to throw away a pair of socks every day. That's why I don't do it. It's just like the idea of tossing out socks every day is extraordinarily wasteful to Donate them a Goodwill. Yeah, I don't know if you can. You can you can. donate socks? Mm. You can't donate a mattress. Yeah, I got a like, freaking mattress I can't get rid of. I mean, if it's been on fucking Gus's feet, I don't want them. That's true. Can you imagine a homeless person getting, like, flakes of Gus? Feed to the their, dog. They'd be socks? lucky. They'd My be dog like, would follow him huh? around. Jesus. He'd be so lucky. What if your dog Who develops a dependency? What an addiction? Huh? What if your dog develops an addiction to your feet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you go away. So he goes to a different owner, and then he starts licking their feet, like, I need your feet. and like. Why would my dog go to a different owner? Why you got to bring that up? So, I know, you always wonder, like, is he going to... Is I hope Do he doesn't become happy. No, no, I'm not going to think about my dog going to someone else. Here we go. So we talk, we, uh... <laughs> Fuck you guys, I'm depressed now. <laughs> no, I don't, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's so okay. we were talking about comments earlier. Did, uh... Yeah. Do you read about the Phil Fish thing? What went down? Yeah, The developer of Fez? Who, what are these things that you're talking about? So did you, did you ever play Fez? Mm-mm. So I, I never played it either, but I always heard about it. It's an indie game, uh, and he was actually in... The independent movie they made called, was it called Indie Game, the movie? Indie Game, the movie, yeah. Indie Game, the movie, yeah. And he was one of the main people highlighted in it. And apparently, the guy's known for being outspoken and, quite frankly, a bit of an asshole, according okay. to most people who follow him. Great. And uh, he got in this argument with um, online critics and uh, abruptly said, you know, fuck this, I can't live in this world of neg negativity, I'm paraphrasing here, and uh, said he's canceling Fez 2 and he's getting out of games, uh, the huh. game industry. And sure enough, the publisher, a few, uh, like half an hour later, or an hour later, posted and said, development of Fez 2 has been canceled. We're sorry for anyone who's disappointed. And uh, that's it. So he's gone. So he just basically... And now there's been this big, like, analysis by the gaming industry or the, the gaming blogging industry about what is going on and, he like, was, what is the sea of neg negativity. At uh, the guy, Angry Gamer. I think it was Annoying Gamer. Annoying Gamer, there you yeah. go. Because he had called him out for not giving a statement about the Xbox One stance on Ugh. indie game publishing before they came out and clarified that you could publish games from any Xbox One console. Here's what I would ask. Like, a publisher, say someone at the top of that project says they don't want to do it now. As a publisher, would you literally go say, all right then, let's just cancel the whole thing. A publisher wouldn't let that happen. They'd get someone new in. Publisher doesn't have the rights to it. They the might have, I don't know. I would imagine there's some kind of insurance as well. Like, I mean, if they like, put that much money I mean, in. The, the, I don't know if the publisher put any money in at that point. You know, we don't know. I mean, if it's an independent game and he's oh, an indie right. developer, yeah. Yeah. he's independently financed. Yeah. You know, either by himself or through his own so time. So I would ask then, if he, like, killed the whole thing just because of this negative of, of critics, what is it that he wants? Like, does he want normal people to enjoy his game? Does he, or does he care about, you know, like, like no, reviews and critics? He's like, done with the game industry. He left the industry. The entire industry. He said that he's done with that negative, the negative cycle. So say, okay, to flip that around, you've got a musician who just makes like cheesy music. Like, you know, not, Nickelback. not good music. Great, Nickelback. I was gonna say One Direction, Nickelback. <laughs> and that, but like, are they gonna quit just because the industry thinks they're not cool? Like, would you say the game industry is any more negative than any other creative injury, in industry? Answer just the yes, same. Yes, I will. Um, they were posting, and I'm working from memory here. I'll get some more notes when we talk about this on the patch later this week. But uh, <laughs> they were showing examples of how, um, you know, people could say things like, boy, the, uh, the, 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 the movies this year kind of look all similar. You know, these movies that are coming out this summer are kind of shitty. And nobody will bat an eyelash at that. But if you say, right. wow, the, uh, the Xbox One looks a lot like the PS4, um, People be like, fuck you, no way, they're totally different. This one's way better, and for this reason, fuck you. And they, they showed a Twitter feed from one of the developers that by, I believe, Call of Duty. And they had just made a modification to balance the sniper rifle in the game. Like, they changed the rebolt time and the reload, rechambering speed of the gun by, like, 0.1 seconds, which makes a difference uh, when you're playing. And the guy's Twitter feed was, like, literally just this, like, endless stream of... Like, fuck you, I hope your family gets killed, I hope you get raped, I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna dismember you. Oh my god, I just died in Call of Duty again, you fucking loser. Fix this or I'll come to your house and chop your head off. I mean, it's just like, you don't really get that in other stuff, man. You really don't get that. It's like, you don't get this, like, constant barrage of unbelievably negative feedback. I mean, you wonder what unless, you make, gets, unless you make Indiana you know. Jones the Crystal Skull. Or, mm. or like M. Night Shyamalan just put out yet another movie, right? And, and people yeah. will sometimes criticize M. Night Shyamalan for not living up to his potential. 
I don't think anyone's ever said, if you make another shitty movie, I'm going to fucking murder you. Mm. I, can't, I don't think anyone's said that. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, but someone pervasive. says something everywhere. It sounds bizarre. It, for whatever reason, it doesn't right, sound yeah. bizarre in the gaming world. Well, I guess because movies are a passive experience, whereas games are active. Yeah, gaming's so like... It, and in the game, everyone has like, a gun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's people kind of messing with you and making your life more difficult if you're playing the game. So that does make more sense than if they're just watching something. Yeah, it's something. like people think that that's their real... It's like it's them pretending that it's their real life. Well, no, it's like everyone, they're making, your, like, they're like, making you more stressed. Uh, yeah. If you want to read a really good article about this, uh, Penny Arcade, the PA report, uh, Ben Kuchera did, I thought, a really great uh, article about it. I, you know, I, I, and we will definitely talk about this more on the patch, I don't necessarily agree that um, you shouldn't read the comments or that you should take those people seriously to the point where you quit the industry. But I will say this. There is some times where I feel like I'm spending my life enter creating entertaining content. I mean, we make dozens of hours of content a week now at Rooster Teeth. There are some points in time when I read some feedback and I'm like, I don't want to entertain that person. Like, I don't want that person to have a better experience in life because right. of my work. It's like, I literally, but you don't, you don't get to pick and choose that. No. No. You know what I mean? It's like... Do you th think that's their way of enjoying content? Now, that's the other argument I've always made in the past, is that you have to read the comments because there's some people who will go through and pick something apart on a critical basis. I'm like, this sucked. I thought this, like, in reverse blue, this was moment was shitty. This joke was funny. This one was not funny. And I used to think like, wow, this guy's an asshole, but it's like, nope, that person is enjoying that content. That's just the way that that person enjoys content. That's a far different scenario though than like, fuck you, you're a shit bag, you shouldn't be making this stuff, you should get raped or killed or you know, your family. You know, that's just like, See, that's this is why charts. we need censorship on the internet to stop kids stop from comments. telling people, stop online discussions. telling people they should kill themselves. It's just awful. I, I'm with David Cameron. I, I actually, I think if, if we want to talk about a solution to some of this stuff might be, is that you no longer have anonymity. That anonymity yeah, is, is anonymity on the internet required? You don't have it anymore. Yeah, you like, do. I, I feel like the, that's, that's an illusion. Like, I, I really In a criminal get... case, you might not. Like, no, if, it, definitely not. It, they can find out from IP and find out who you are, probably. But just making a comment is part of the, just the anonymous like sea of people constantly making noise. Yeah, you have an anonymity. I mean, I there's know. big problems with cyberbullying about that, especially in England, of people that would just, especially for teenagers, they would have those like, send me a question and I'll answer it. And like people anonymously, anonymously send questions to 14 year olds like, why don't you kill yourself? If, you if you're curious, like Google someone's username and they very well might have a link to like a public profile. Like they use that same username on Look. other sites that reveal it. Like there's, it's unbelievable the ridiculous amount of privacy people still We're making two have. different arguments. I'm okay. saying you can be anonymous. You're saying some people are bad at anonymity. I agree some people are bad at anonymity. More and people they leave are a trail. bad than they realize. They leave a trail saying. of it, but yeah. I'm saying it's like, if, if you could no longer be anonymous. Yeah. Like if you, when you, you had to post- Your username your was your name. full name. Yeah. yeah. You might be surprised at what people wouldn't put up at that point in time. A lot of people yeah. be changing their real names to John Smith. Yeah. 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 But then it's like, how would you enforce John that? You would have yourself. to like, at that point, if you were going to enforce that, you would have people to like have to s like link with their government ID or like their social security number or something, and then that's getting a bit weird. No, I you could. Me. I mean, you, you say like that's how weird. Do, how do, how do I know Credit you're card. you? I'll tell you. I guess. You say it's weird, but your ISP is going to have a control panel that you can go to that controls what you see on the internet. Who knows your real name when you connect to the internet? Your ISP. They know so one. They, they know one name in a household. Right. So they would put that name on everything, and then yeah. the master account can create sub accounts. It sounds like a lot of work. Not that far-fetched compared to what the UK is already implementing for privacy control. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can I read you a small sampling here? This is from the PA report. This is a report by, I think it's by Ben Kuchera who wrote this. Um, the byline, I think, is at the bottom. Let me read it to you, and then I'll, I'll attribute the quote to who said it uh, or who wrote it. Um, David Vonderhaar is the studio design director on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Recently, it was announced that a gun in the game was being balanced. Quote, the DSR fire time was 0.2 seconds. It's now 0.4 seconds. Von der Haar said on Twitter, the rechamber time was 1.0 seconds, it's now 1.1 seconds, unquote. He also said he didn't know if these fractions of a second are worth threats of violence. That's not hyperbole, and in fact, he was being very calm about the sort of messages he was receiving, some of which you can see in this Tumblr. I want to quote a few, and I'm not going to edit any of the words or spelling. This is what we ask the people to make our games to wake up to every morning. This is their diet of fan interaction. These are quotes on Twitter. Why do I get probation when even... When the game kicks me, you fucking retarded faggot, piece of shit, packy cunt. Ooh. Another one is, I'm going to tie you up and rape your family if you don't fix the fucking DSR. I hope you die in the gas chambers like your parents did. 
I wow. can't Good fucking Lord. imagine. I cannot imagine if somebody put out a movie or a TV show that they would get that. Here's a great example. People fucking hated uh, a recent development in Game of Thrones that happened. And we're okay. like, George R. R. Martin, you're, I'm never going to watch your show again. You know, it's stuff like that. I don't remember hearing a litany of like, George R. R. Martin, I hope you fucking die. Yeah. You so, know, and things like that. I, I just don't remember hearing that. Because we the, know that Game of Thrones is not real, isn't it? Well, then is, it, is it historical or is it not? Yeah, of course it is. Okay. Okay. No, Game so, of Thrones. It's but with video games yeah. that you know that video games <laughs> are not real, like even with Call of Duty that's based on real life, ben, you know it's not real. You grew up in the UK. How do you know that Westeros is not a real place? What is Westeros? They have dragons in Game of Thrones. <laughs> Damn it! Why <laughs> didn't get that far? <laughs> what six we were getting, episodes? I was, I was gonna give no. a fucking history lesson about Westeros and the seven fucking kingdoms of the UK, asshole, and you ruined it with the dragons. I can't believe. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I've even lost track of what he can't believe. <laughs> it I need is, more. It's totally fictional. It's totally okay, fictional. Okay, it's all fictional. So, but with video games, except for the dragons. <laughs> Thanks, Bunny. So with video games, people know that it's not real because, you know, they're playing it and they're controlling it. They don't think, oh, I'm actually controlling a real person in the real world. So I've lost track of what my point is. All right, yeah, you're kind of countering yourself there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I love it. Neither the one of them is real. Like, like you said, people know Game of Thrones isn't real. They also know Call of Duty's not real. Yeah. You know, and they make arguments about, you know, that it's not. But what percentage of those comments that you read do you think really reflect the overall volume of interaction those people have. It's with probably, I think you hear the negative people a lot more. Those yeah. people are a you, lot more you vocal. Hear them you because don't of hear how people bad that have nothing bad to say. It's probably more vocal. The people, there's no one who is like, oh, thank you for increasing the chamber time from 1.0 to 1.1 seconds. The game is much better now. No one fucking sends that message. Yeah, yeah. but I yeah. mean, overall thoughts in like, you know, communication about the game and reflection about the game. It's still, there's still a lot of positive stuff. Like granted, when they make little changes, so does Twitter as we've seen, or any website has seen uh, as well, like Facebook makes a change, all you hear are negative things. Right. But still, the overall reflection on the product, I'm sure, is still really good. But it's just those horrible comments that get everyone's attention, and those become the focus. Well, you look at the feedback. When the only feedback you get is negative, I mean, you. What but do you is think? that the only feedback you think? Yes. As, but, as someone who helps run a website that makes changes occasionally, <laughs> yeah, but the we changes, have to monitor that feedback. The changes, but I'm talking about the overall product. Like, I get that the things you change will create a negative reaction. I don't mm. think you should realistically expect people to like change because they just don't. But the overall product and like the overall way that people enjoy your games and the communication that they have with you, I'm assuming is way more positive than the much yeah, smaller Yeah, but you don't know that if you don't get the feedback. But am I a fucking psychic? I can read people's minds and know what their experience is? You don't think there's a lot of Tumblr posts on just people liking the games? Or do you think pe those people who complain about Call of Duty there's no one else who says they like Call of Duty? I'm telling you, I guarantee you, the guy did not get a single message that says, thank you for increasing the chamber time on this rifle from 1.0 to 1.0. No, 1. I agree oh with God. that because that's the nature of making changes. I agree that that's very negative. I'm just saying the overall experience about being in the gaming industry or the entertainment industry, I feel like the overall feedback you get is positive. It's just those n things that stand out as well, negative. Yeah. Well, in that specific case, then, yeah, you can say it's positive because the game made $300 million, you know? I just think like there's it. a dialogue of people liking the game. Yeah. No, I, I agree. But it's hard when you get beat down. It is. When the only interaction, the only messaging you're getting is, I hope you die in a gas chamber. Great. I feel great about the job I do every day. Marvelous. I'm going to message him and let him know that I like Hi, it. Hi, Bernie. What's up? Uh, fix your game. Everyone hates it because of the lag. Why can't you shoot around corners? I'm just reading like random sampling here. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about this guy on this Twitter account now from the, the articles that have come up. Um... You know, it's just it's a it's a lot of feedback about how much they don't like the game, uh, about being shitty and stuff like that. But Ben, you and I used to talk about this a lot. Did um, we? A few years ago, yeah. Um, you know, we talk about like uh, reverse going all the way back to like season six. We used to talk about processing comments. Yep. And one of the things I remember talking to you about, I actually wanted to do a game time with you and talk to you about just interaction, uh, online social interaction. Um, especially as a young person and like kind of growing up in that and see what it's like. So I'm if I say yes on the podcast, does that make me contractually obliged? Absolutely. Before you go home, we'll, we'll have to record it. But like one of the things we talked about was that you went through a period I felt like where there would be 45 pages of comments on something. Mm. And if there's the one negative comment, that one would stick with you. And I think mm. that's a thing that a lot of trap that a lot of people fall into. And I fall into it as well, where in the sea of good comments, like lol, good episode or whatever or just like oh somebody quoting like Kabu said this and they just put the quote in that's typically a good comment but then there's the one in the middle that's like here's why this episode is shit dot 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 and that that comment because it's contrary and because it like draws out like details and points it seems more intelligent 
than all the other right. comments that are just sitting there saying they liked it, you know? But if they just said, bullshit, this sucks, whatever. But no one's going to go through and say, I love this episode because of this and because of that. But then and, you know, they will on. as a reaction, though, to that person. That's a different thing. They will, like, like, that person instigates a discussion, and then people will respond and say, this is why I like that. That's like critics' reviews. It's a difference between a guttural reaction, like something that you immediately feel, right. and then something when you try to analyze something. You know, what you really want is the guttural reaction. Right? And, but yeah, you do. And you want, or you, what you want is the 99.8% of the people who don't leave a comment yeah. and just watch the show every week and come back or and you know play Call of Duty every week it, yeah. and just have a great time and they get their ass kicked or they, their sniper rifle yeah. doesn't load as fast this week and they're like, I guess I'll use the machine gun. You really yeah. know if something's not good and it's not working if people stop going to it. You know, yeah. the comments at that point don't really matter. If people, if people don't like something, they don't go to it. But if the numbers are going up and more people are looking at it, you know, they're not saying that to you, they're not communicating that to you, but you've got that number that you know that more people are going to it. And that's the thing as well with events like RTX and stuff, is those people start to become ju not just numbers, but real people. And you see like, s like swarms of people like in like panels, just like filled with thousands of people that really love it. They, would, they probably would not leave a comment saying, I enjoyed this experience, I would watch it again next week. Right, it's just you yeah. get that from them being in the place their laughter, and then they leave with a smile on their face. Right. And, even and only one guy puts his mouth on the mic and fillets it, but that's yeah. the guy that everybody remembers. <laughs> we all remember that guy. <laughs> even if he does, there's still a huge evidence of you know, engagement that he had. It would have been different if he was just like, this sucks, goodbye. But I mean, he still chose to kind of go through it. He wasn't it negative. I'm just saying it's like an example of like, you draw out the yeah. extreme examples, and you, you tend to remember those. And that's just, the way, that's just the way that works. But the one comment does not negate the 42 pages of comments no, from people no. before it saying no. they liked it. Yeah. But you shouldn't. Yeah. 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 And you, so, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say. It's like, should you quit an industry because of that kind of thing? I guess it all depends on your personality. Some people don't want to do that. But then it makes me wonder, what is someone like Phil Fish going to go do? Like, what, is he going to go into writing for TV? Is he going to go into graphic design? Yeah, who knows? You know, it could what, have also been a lot of other stuff. I don't even know who he is, so I can't tell you. This is the guy who made Fez. I don't yeah. know who that is, so I can't say anything. I've got no input. Be careful. Especially yeah. dealing with all the pressure, too making a successful product. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons that he probably that yeah. didn't work out. Yeah, you, you guys should definitely read the article by Ben Kuchera. It was really very telling. In the middle of it, he had a YouTube clip uh, from Dave Chappelle talking to the, who's the actor studio guy? Uh, James Lipton. Yeah, talking to James Lipton. And he's talking about the pressures of Hollywood. And it's like, we said, this guy's crazy. Dave Chappelle went to Africa. He's crazy. Martin Lawrence was running through traffic with a gun. He's crazy. Mariah Carey was you know, went half naked on TRL, she's crazy. He said, but these aren't crazy people. He goes, these are well-established, great performers. He goes, it's a hard thing to do. They're not crazy. He goes, so what is it? What is, why are people acting like this? What is it about this environment that make, makes people act like that? And it's a good question, you know? I don't think Phil Fish is crazy. Why don't you start the imagination? I think, it, I think if he's an asshole, I think some people are just inherently assholes and call people out on stuff. But what is it about that that just draws like moths to a flame all this negative interaction and how much can one individual individual be expected to bear from uh, that? Yeah, because he didn't have a big company, right? It was uh, just small him. Company, so it's yeah. like you're not really sharing that load of, you know, criticism. It's like they're not really criticizing the game or the company. They're criticizing you as a person. That's tough. You know, I study media communications at university, so I should be able to give you an academic answer to your question. Go ahead. I can't because yeah, I've been drinking. That, but that doesn't sound like a bullshit course at all. But... You know, the reason why people love that is because they want that ability to just be an asshole with no repercussions, with no consequences. And it gives them that kind of like deep down desire, like every day, like people that like you work with that you don't like, you say, I fucking hate you, like Bruh. all these things you have to kind of repress. Being anonymous on the internet lets you just yeah. unload all this stuff and you know it will never come and, back to and you. And that's why Bernie says that, you know, removing anonymity on the internet would... Yeah. I don't think that. you could do that. Though, it's fair. tough. You absolutely you know. could. You would also lose a lot because there's a lot of places in the world where the internet is used for purposes you know right. that you need to be anonymous for. You know, yeah. somebody, somebody, like you political know. uprisings and shit. Yeah, and for communicating, like there's a lot of people in you know places where information is not free and they need to be able to access other parts of the world where it is and not identify themselves. So I, I get that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but maybe Twitter isn't one of those places. It also lets you be very you know impulsive. Like I think uh, someone was saying how if, if Twitter forced you to wait a minute and then asked you, do you really want to tweet this? We'd probably have less people fucking mm -hmm. up, especially athletes and saying really stupid things. You, if you get mad, you can just go on the internet and then just say something. You don't have to get a piece of paper and a pen and write it all out and get an envelope because at that time you're just like, oh, I'm fucking over it. Yeah. But I mean, that reminds I me think, of the, I the think drunk I text filter. Like, do you really want to send this? So, 
I think I have a skewed view of privacy on the internet just because I feel like I really don't have much of it. You don't? Yeah. You it, really well, do any not. Any account I make, like, like you talked about like generic names, names being searchable, my name is instantly findable. Yeah. You know, there's not a bunch of Gus Sorolas. The thing is, well, like, you look it up, it's gonna, it's probably me or it's like, my dad. You'll be like in an interview and people will be asking you things and you'll say something in the minute that you'll forget immediately. And then like people will bring that up like, I said that? On the podcast, that happens all the time. Yeah. And then there's like hundreds of hours of you for your future children to look back and like, my dad was an asshole. Don't forget, kid. Yeah, hey, you have uh, an encyclopedia of Gus. How many podcasts yeah. have you done? 150? <laughs> Way more than that. 200? Two, yeah, over 200, 200 yeah. So it's 200 hours, no more than that. Maybe Gus, you've been on, what, like 95% of the podcast? Something like that. 500 hours of Gus. Gus. Your every Gus opinion to every Gus's topic history. you've given. Yeah, great. Yeah, your name on every, every just, medical condition you've had, you've given. We should probably end this before I say anything else I regret. Or say anything I Too regret. Too many more medical conditions. Yeah. Are you Googling me? Yeah, I'm just looking. Your, your name auto-completes pretty quickly. You're like the third entry. Interesting. Yeah. For it's like an encyclopedia Gus. Britannica of Gus. Yeah, not a lot of Gus's. All right. Well, I think we're at Something time. Up. So we should uh, we All should right. go ahead and wrap this up. So I want to thank everyone for watching this week, and we'll be back on Wednesday with a new episode of the Patch, and next Monday with another episode of the Rooster Podcast. I need a haircut. Me too. Let's go get haircuts right now. Cheers. Cheers. Look, you're doing. Bye. Bye. Any day now. See, you wanted to fire me. There you go. Hey. Ah, kick, 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 kick. Gotta get drunk. Gotta get drunk. Gotta get drunk at the Rooster Podcast. Gus is the man in charge, and Bernie makes it go too long. Gavin's British, and Brandon's not smart. Joel loves Golden Michael, Rage quits, Jeff is just cool, and Jack has a beard. And Barbara's Canadian. So, 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 so get a beer, and get drunk, and laugh at the Rooster Podcast. Formerly known as the Drunk Tank.